we thought that we weren't going to be able to uh, do this because we actually thought, I don't know if there's anybody in here or not, but I don't know if you see the chat. Oops. Cancel. We weren't getting much luck on the signal because we're kind of down in no man's land. But, hey, somebody's in here. I don't have the eyes. Catfish Cameron. Almost time for epic. Yeah, it is time. As a matter of fact, we're going to tell you the story first before we even put the rods out. But I'll wait till a bunch of people get in here. And then we'll, so we don't have to keep repeating it. Because it's a pretty interesting story. So, hey, Sean, you got that light thing? Do we just plug that thing in? Hell yeah. Okay. Where do we plug? Oh, we can plug it as long as we don't have to use You're going to need a charger too? Yeah. But I can plug it in off something else. All right, now how do you? Nope, must be right here. We got us a new light. Hey, maybe that works. Yeah. We got one of those one of those round lights that Chunky and everybody else has got. Sean, Sean brought it. It was oh, awesome. It's, it's awesome. It's a cheaper version. Hey, nothing wrong with that. All right, so. Let's get this thing up a little bit so we can see. You gotta bring your legs up then. Yeah. You can go with the first stage or that stage. Yep. Or... Let's go to here. Let's go to there. Yeah, this thing's awesome. All right, now let me get this up a little. All right. I know the sun's kind of in all of our faces right now. It'll be gone in a little bit. I was telling the story in chat the other day when Sean got a piece of metal in his eye. This is the very spot we fished like for two, like two days or one of the spots that we fished and we had stared into the sun the whole time and he was like about crying. I put a paper towel over my eye. Yeah, all right, so I'm gonna tell the story and get the rods rigged up. If you wanna read me what everybody's saying because I can't read a darn thing. All right, so first, it wasn't really easy to get bait. We got this. This is a grass carp. We've got regular carp. It's not too long ago. We've got a drum, which I don't know what they're, people call them like a Gasper goo or something in the south. All right. I call them a possum pecker. Then we've got a handful of monster size, like James River size gizzard shad. Awesome. Stand and we were lucky smooth. enough to get two moon eye. And this is a moon eye, if you guys can see it very well. And uh, this is actually my favorite bait, but with the water being low, it, they're really tough to get, especially during the day. We may have to go try to net some at night but let's just hope we're on fish right now. There's, you can see the little teeth on their tongue right here. They've got a big eye. Now, some people call this a moon eye because it doesn't have a golden eye. Some people call them golden eye or gold eye. So it's really kind of interesting. One of my favorite baits on the Mississippi for flatheads and for blues. And we're actually in blue cat territory as well. So we're hoping to double up on flatheads and blues. And I'll tell this story in just a second. So, one more thing we've got. We've got 10 people in here. Oh, nobody's saying anything. I don't know. There we go. Country boy. We've got fillets What's up, country? of Asian carp. Now, this thing started out about yay big. And look at that. It's all bloody and thickness. all that stuff. Thickness. You know, yeah, it's got some thickness. <laughs> Information. Now it's not like we've got a ton of bait. We've got one bag right here and usually it takes about three times this much. So hopefully, well, we also have live bluegills which we're gonna be throwing and we know that these fish will hit cut bluegills this time of year. So we're gonna, we're gonna throw a, a big smorgasbord and see what happens. 30 people in here, Georgia, country boy, what's up buddy? Creole cat fishing, Jeremy, what's up? Country boy says, hey Epic, what's up? Hey, hey everybody. 
sorry guys, I'm kind of on a mission right now. And, and let, let me tell the rest of this story a little bit. So we started out, we were gonna go close to home and the, the river had dropped a little bit. It just didn't have the right current. I was kind of tired of, you know, basically hitting those same spots that we knew we could uh, we could do a live. So we were, we were basically stuck to the bridge area. We were stuck to the barge because there's towns within proximity. And so we actually drove three and a half hours. Just south. for you guys. We wanted Just to take you, you yeah. somewhere different. Somewhere new. And this particular wing dike is almost exactly like the one I did in the wing dike video. So we've got about 30 foot of water over here. We've got 28. We're, we're actually sitting at the precipice right where, because the dike comes up. This is the upstream side. The dike comes up. It goes over just a little ways and then it drops off into 28 foot of water. And our boat is sitting right where the nine foot drops into 14 foot. So if basically just hang one off the back of the boat, it's gonna be in 14 foot. But if I pick it up and let it bounce down, it's then gonna be in about 18, 19 foot. And, and within a short cast, it's, it's, it's where that the deep water, the boat sitting up here, the deep water meets that bottom. And we'll also cast out because big blues and flatheads will sit back in that sort of current. We're gonna cast stuff to the left, we're gonna cast stuff to the right, and hope, just like in my video, hope that we can catch those little ridges. Now there is, and this is one of my traditional spots that I've fished for a long time and I've caught lots of monsters here. We're a little bit early for that. We got kind of excited and said, well, you know, let's go to, let's go to a, a monster spot. And it's really kind of early for it. So we've got our fingers crossed. So tell me what everybody's saying. I will, I'm gonna start baiting up rocks. Give me my donkey cup. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Oh. All right. Sir we're, Fins. Yeah, we're kind of excited about this. PK Crow Greenwell, what's going on? Catfish Cameron. Yeah, we got we got a little bait. We got a little bait buffet. No, we're not in Alton. Nope. We're north. North a little ways. Quite a ways. A couple hours north of Alton. Yeah, I'm kind of excited, guys. Uh, uh, I haven't seen a blue cat in a while. I don't remember the, the last one. Is that the one? Yeah. And when I caught it with Spencer. We may not see a blue cat today either, but we're going to try. <laughs> we may not see one today. We're going to see one. I think so. We don't know if the population is really good up in this pool yet or not, but you know what? You got to go. You never know till you throw. And I think we're on the right side of the spawn and... It's been hot. This water is low, low, low up here. If we could get these boats to quit going by here. You like the little setup Kelly bought? It's a pretty nice little setup. It. It's cheap. Love it. All right, so the first rod that I'm putting out, I don't know if you guys can see me. Oh, yeah. But it is going to be at the top. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's going to be at the top of the wing dike because when as they get active they'll come to the base they'll run up matter of fact we got one coming up the edge right now he's suspended a little bit so i'm using the dropper rig basically that is in line i don't really love the ones that come way out like this i've only got an eight ounce sinker because i don't really need a donkey weight for this sort of you know this sort of current this is pretty low current usually usually it's about three or four feet higher this time of year Boom, Dominic Hollis with a $10. Whoa. Hey, hey awesome. thank you, thank you. Awesome. You guys are awesome. Dominic Hollis. Now, I'm going to put this, and, and I'm going to be pretty strategic where I put these. And, I, and the one that is at the top of the dike, I'm going to put up here in my forward rod holder because I don't want it in the way of, of what I've got going. So the, I have two forward and they're all the way up by the dash, and that's what I usually put my droppers uh, that are on top of the dike. Then I'll start to drop some off the back, and then I'll cast out. I know we're getting kind of... We might have some weather coming to you guys. Yeah, yeah. Why are we pointing this? That's weird. Because we got hit by that, that wave. I could put the drift sock out, but I just assume not. The less in the water, the better off we are. Gotcha. Um, all right. So did, did you uh, did you mention that uh, 
that we're keeping the shad in with our drinks because I forgot the bait cooler. Yeah, we got a bait cooler. Our bait cooler is doubling as our drink cooler too. But we're fine with that. Yeah, we got some big chunk of Asian carp. We caught one real big one, flayed out real nice. He actually hung it off the boat, gutted it, so we didn't have to have all the guts and, you know, all the shit in here. Because I also forgot the cutting board. Yep. All right. Now, I've also got this style of dropper, which off the back of the boat, I really kind of like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up this piece of moon eye. We don't have much, so we're going to save it pretty good. So we've got a sinker slider right here and a dropper and a 12 ounce weight because I, I do want it to stay. I've got 65 pound power pro and I'm going to try to keep it off the rocks. So I'm going to cast it basically at the very base of this because we marked the, the, that's the other thing. Once you describe how much water we looked at before we even yeah. decided to anchor. Yeah. We did some scouting. Brian B, it's yeah, always the same. We have a little bit of everything, a little bit of vodka little bit of bang uh bang flavors cotton candy that's pretty good bang bang cotton candy and a little bit of that just to sip on a little bit you know relax the back 45 people 20 thumbs up 10 dual hairs awesome awesome we got fish moving underneath the boat we just gotta hope that they bite It's been a hot one. We got we got weather, guys. It looks like yep. a, some stuff Big thunder coming in. Coming right in. But we're no sissies. We might be on the uh, south side of it, hopefully. So now I'm going to take the corner rod on this left-hand side. I'm going to throw it towards the tip of the dike, which is which is this way. The base of the dike is that way. I'm going to throw it towards the tip, almost even with the boat. And it is going to dribble down until it hits that base of that hole. Now we marked flatheads in there. Let's hope they're gonna eat cut bait. They haven't really eaten cut bait well all year, but maybe they will down here. I'd be catching them all if Ronan wasn't trying to kill my family. Eric Flowers, what the hell? I shared you out in about 20 fishing groups on Facebook, Sunfish awesome. Assassin, Assassin. Thanks, bud. All right. Here's like a big piece of seal meat getting ready to go out. Look at this thing. Just looks like, looks like the Inuit Indians eat right. this in the wintertime. Put a little Tabasco on it and eat it as yeah. is. Man. These Man. fools need to stop. Yeah, they do. Dag blasted pleasure boaters. I'm gonna start laying some of that stuff up after we get settled in. Right on. Where did I get this schmeg? Schmegma. Let's see off the top of this cooler here. You know where it, what it's from? It's from that Asian carp. Yeah. Which we're gonna get more on. Dang it. Bit. Brent Beckwith, did I read that right? Yep. Hey, Tim, he says. Hey, buddy. Big Mike. What's up, Big Mike? Are you kidding me? I just hit a stick. At least the dogs aren't barking, Jim Tassetti. I keep on putting my fingers. Hey, there's Peace City. Peace City. What's, What's up, up, buddy? In the house. Did you get the roller coaster rides done today? <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna take one and we're gonna put it towards the shallower end. So Bob from Jacksonville. Hello, Sean, what's Tim. What's up, Bob? I was just showing Sean some of the pictures you had sent me and the pictures that we took. He when says, you, came you down know, I like seeing those big baits. Oh yeah. All right. Let's hope they. Let's hope those fish like to see those big baits too. And we got our first bite already. It's going to take it down. I think. Come on. We've had we've caught some beasts here. We got lit up one night out here. You just never know. Earlier, we marked some nice fish in here. Coming to me, coming to me. I'm gonna have to. Oh. 
still a little bit tappy. But that's not unusual during the day. Bite out there, there too. We got bites everywhere. Okay, so everybody, we we scouted probably fifty dollars from Pat Deets. Oh, Pat Deets. Is that P Deets? Yeah, that's Pat. Pat Deets. I think so. <laughs> you know what, everybody? Pat Deets is a, is like a long high school friend of mine, long time, like since we were. Like I'm sure P 13, Deets. 14 years old. That guy is. Thanks, awesome. buddy. He is awesome. One of the greatest. You have some of the, the best people that I know. You, your friends are great, man. I, I, I'm I wish very, very I, when I, I wish when I was in school I'd had friends like yours, man. You know what? I wish everybody had friends like mine, including my kids and everybody. Fifty you know. people, twenty-seven thumbs up. Mr. Duggar, fishy fishing country boys. He says. All right, let's hope for some takedowns because this is a little bit packy right now. I'm not convinced that they're not channel cats so far. But that doesn't mean that they are. But out of probably 10 miles of river that we scouted, this area was holding the best and biggest amount of fish. There are areas right now in this river that are pretty darn devoid. We're in a sea arc right now. Yeah, we're in a sea arc. 18 by 8. Eric, yeah. It's a catfish oh, battleship. Everywhere, dude. It's a catfish battleship. It goes up little small creeks, rivers, and all all over. Jet, it's a jet. Big rivers. I mean, we got bites as soon as we throw them. I'm just hoping we're not sitting in on Dinkersville. I don't know how we are. I don't like Dinkersville, people. I don't like it. So this is not a spot that I've caught like Thanks super blow. giants, but I've caught everything from multitudes of 20s all the way up to 70 pounders. Matter of fact, this anchor right here is on my top 10 anchors list, albeit lower on the list, but I think we caught 10 fish over 30 pounds, three or four, and, and I have to look at my notes, but like three or four of those were over 40, a couple over 50, one over 70, hey. and a 60. Oh, never mind. Oh, oh. Stop. It's just a big hit. Yeah. Let's go, let's go take down. Let's go take down. All right, we gotta, we gotta get this boat organized. I know. Here, right there, that's perfect. Fifty-nine people, thirty-three thumbs up. Yeah, wide boat's good. Yeah, this morning we were getting ready. We were just gonna go over to uh, Rock Island, and uh, he's like, "You know what? Let's go to Keokuk instead." I Took said me. we're only two and a half hours from there. Yeah. So we made some sandwiches. Do some drinks in the cooler. Ooh, this one here. We might have to get the really big baits out. Just oh my gosh! Look at the monster coming up. What is that thing? Let's hope he hits. That's one of the biggest things I've ever seen on a fish on. finder. Yep, that thing looks like a walrus. Gotta get another down rod down. I want to put this one as a down rod though. Let's put, uh... Yeah, let's get one of those. So we're going to have to put another down rod because they, we got fish moving around. We don't have fish hammering the rods yet, but they are moving around and we have located a good pile of fish. Yeah, let's do this one. Yeah, man, that thing was huge. Oh, yeah. That gets me excited. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're going to have to think about plugging that thing in, too, at some point. Yeah. So now, a lot of people do... A lot of people do down rigs differently. But what I do is I take a, a stretch of 80 and I tie just an overhand, like a just a square knot 
about like you're tying your shoes to one end like this and then I do the same thing on the other end all right so now we got two loops on each end this is for bank sinkers or donkey weights with the smaller you know with the with the bigger holes all right what you need? sunfish on only yep what up country boy all right so so now I've got about a 24 inch section right here of line and I'm gonna take <laughs> 12 yeah, ounce donkey ball. weight because we're gonna be putting it straight down with 50 pound test and a pretty big bait and I'm thinking I want to put a live bluegill straight down so then I've got a standard just this the, the standard uh, sinker slider right here and I'm gonna attach that to that this to that and then my so then this can actually slide on here I don't have an inline tied so that if it's a flathead it doesn't have to drag the sinker very much it'll just pull the rod down like this and it, it has really made a difference over the years Dustin's in here what's up Dustin Dustin what's happening okay so we're gonna put Dustin says we have caught some awesome fish on our straight down rods yep, yep. You better believe it now here's the other thing I want to do I want to I want to which I haven't used before and I'm gonna give it a try 60 people in here, 39 well, thumbs up. That. We're just going to put a 10 out on this. <coughs> Got any donks in there? Probably not. Uh, we're going to get a donkey live bait. Yeah, we do. We get a couple pliers. Do you hook those donks different when you're down there? Like, do you forehead hook them? Or no, you just... not, not at this current. I do in I heavier see. current. I see. Dave Smith says, hey, Epic Catfish. Dave Smith, what's going on? Thank you guys all for coming in here. Hopefully we can get you guys a monster. I, th I think we will. Now, we ran into a local tournament guy that told us that we should have went farther south because he doesn't think there's too many blue cats in this pool right now. Because they haven't been running, uh, they haven't been running the gates below to let the big blue cats up here because the fall migration they go down then the summer they come up and by almost august 2nd it's really prime up here but this will be oh, like this the smaller population version of this yes. fishing here. so do we have some donkey baits yeah. yes we do all right sean if you'd like to do the honors let's lower her down right in there mm -hmm. now so far every one of our rods has been dinked and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're small fish. Sometimes at this time of night, you get dinks and you have to pretty much wait them out or use bigger baits. And these aren't big baits so far because I didn't really want to throw big baits early on and get them basically dinked to death because we're, we're kind of at a disadvantage because we don't have a whole bunch. We can go get some after dark, but they don't show up until after dark. All right, so now I'm gonna take a big piece uh, take a big, big piece of seal meat, and I'm going to throw that out back into the big blue cat territory. If anybody has fished with Asian carp, they have very tough skin. It's almost like eel skin. If you can look and see the tiny little scales, but the, the skin is really tough and they will, you know, little fish will chew this down to like just a little bit of a mess and you'll have to cut it off to get a new bait on a lot of times. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna send this. this is gonna get have you ever tried lobsters? <laughs> Did somebody say that? Catfish and chaos. I have used crayfish and I have used squid and shrimp, but never lobsters. That's always been a little bit too rich for me. All right, we're gonna get up and get this thing cranking. Send it. Yep, that's on the upper lip of the hole. So the, the, the wing dike comes up, goes over, goes down, 
makes a big hole and then kind of flattens out. And I just cast it right where it starts to rise. Sean. James Kim. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm gonna get to work on my drink here and uh, keep our fingers crossed for some. Better get some donkey water in there. Yeah. It's up there so you can grab it. I, I fished it out. Yeah, it's fine. I'm almost ready for another because I was thirsty, boy. Man, was it hot today. Woo! Oh, yeah. Woo! Sultry, folks. Sultry. Yeah, <laughs> it works good. Completely off camera too. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, we're clouding up pretty good. It, is. it looks to be going north of us, hopefully. So my uh, son, who is my youngest son, which is now uh, 15 years old, when he was young, he'd say, Dad, can I go? And I'd say, son, uh, yeah, your older brother's going because he's big enough to handle this. And he was always disappointed. And I basically had to tell him in, in not so many words, he wasn't man enough to go because the fish were so big. And granted, that, that's in August. This is still July, and a lot of times we don't get pounded by super giants here. We just get catch decent fish and an occasional big one. So by the time he was like 13 or 14, he was actually big enough to handle these big fish. And he said, uh, Dad, I really want to go. And he locked into a literal super monster. And well, it, for him it was. And uh, it was on the what we used to call the long dong rods, which they're basically a graphite casting rod of about nine, ten, the one's 10 foot and the other one's 11. So he, he got locked into this because he caught him way back in the, uh, the distance. And it wasn't too bad because a lot of times they'll come towards you underneath the dike and then they'll start to fight you at the precipice. And I'm telling you what, he had the reddest face you've ever seen. Hey, can I get these glasses? Mm -hmm. You uh, just handle any donkeys that go down. Right on. Uh, all right, wow, that's awesome. I can see really well outdoors with otis hooked up okay so i was getting ready to tell that story and anyway he ended up hooking into an athletic 62 pound blue that was like ridiculously long i'll have to post the pictures after this but um he says dad he says i see why you didn't want me to come here when i was like nine Oh, it is a beautiful night. It was rough during the day. We had an upriver wind and white caps and all kinds of crazy stuff going on. But if we don't hook up any big monsters here, we've got a whole stretch of a ledge with deep water wood. We do plan on doing some flathead fishing if the blue cats aren't cooperating. Dustin, how long did you have to throw for bait? Uh, I threw my arms off, buddy. It's pretty rough until night. Um, hey, Brian B., Gosh, these things disappear. Uh, we are on the Mississippi about two and a half hours south of, um, well, we're actually about three and a half, yeah, about three hours south of the Quad Cities. Country boy catfishing. All right. Can you guys see the rods? We do have glow sticks ready. We also have the Christmas tree lights on four rods, and I just heard one go off. Man, I'm blind as a bat when I turn around <laughs> with these things. Those are three times. Woo! Okay, so I turn around and I can't even see the rods. I see them better in here than I do in there. No, Mr. Gadget. And if you... F I would think about it, but there's very rarely a top-tier bite here. I have been here when, when, when big blues or flatheads were taking Asian carp off the surface. It sounds like bowling balls getting thrown into the water. It wasn't beavers. It was, I mean, just boom, boom. And it happened so crazy. What's up? I think it's Johnny Clary. Um, 
I was here once and we were pounded by flatheads so fast and there were so many of them and it all it, it lasted yeah it is too much current to get it down mr gadget uh there's quite a bit actually even though it's low right now but as you can see there's still quite a bit of current right here so anyway for 45 50 55 minutes we just got barraged by flatheads in the corner and, and believe it or not on tiny little sheds it's all we could get we caught them from 20 to 45 pounds uh, right until about an hour after dark and then the bowling ball sounds stopped the fish weren't hitting the top of the water anymore and the bite was over we didn't get another bite for another two hours it was just like it happened all at once and it was over one of the most incredible things i've ever witnessed all right i'm going to pay attention to these rods a little bit and i'm going to come back we do have we have 59 people in here yeah super chats of 60 dollars thanks to wonderful awesome people we got 42 thumbs up all right we're gonna try to get you a monster quad cities uh just follow 80 from the uh east to the west right to the river that's where the quad cities is oh man did i miss a super chat i hope not i missed one and somebody got really mad at me because i i did i i went back and watched it and uh yeah he called me ungrateful so <laughs> Yeah, I was like, shoot, I can't catch everything. Yeah, uh, yeah, either ungrateful or just not appreciative or something like that. Yeah, know that you're so a psycho. anyway, yeah, I don't know if he knows I'm a psycho, but let's just say if if these baits are sitting here and just getting dink tapped, I just can't. Yep, Dominic Hollis, ten bucks, awesome. Wow, my money's on Drumhead cat fishing chaos you know what we'll put a drum head out there for just you for just to see just for you uh, hey, okay so yeah we, we got we, we got some action going but we just don't have that that big fish stuff we need that big fish action but then again it's a little early for that this time of year okay so as you guys know by now I am I, I, I'm not going to be satisfied with just leaving the baits where they're at I got to move them I got to change them and, and I, I really got to reach out because a lot of times they're not really moving they're just sitting out there and if I can get it close enough to them they'll bite it obviously we're close to fish but they just don't either they're just not active or they're not big and they don't seem to be big because a big fish has a different wavelength it's it's more like dump instead of this you know, e even these ones that just sort of are doing this, but usually there's some weight to it on the back end. That's one of the things I'm going to explain at the catfish. Uh, it's not catfish college. What is that called? Conference. conference. Catfish conference. I, I forget. I've been involved in so many of those things. But anyway, I'm going to explain the difference between big fish and little fish, how flatheads react, how channel cats react, and, and how you can, you know, basically combat that so that you can hook up with more fish. I'll be right back. Oh yeah, Michael Marillo in the house. Michael What's happening, Brian Roush? All right. Also, I'm gonna pay attention to these baits because if these baits have been chewed on by small fish, we're gonna consider moving. But so far they haven't. They've been tapped a little bit. You know, this this Asian carp meat here is pretty tough. But those little fish will start to tear little pieces off, and th that hasn't been the case so far on this one. All the P City's good fish come on cut bait. Well, that's all we got out besides one thing. River Hippie says catfish college is where I went. My parents thought I was in class. <laughs> well, you're always in class when you get out on the water. That's right. This trip right here, this impromptu little trip, we came down here and we did a lot of scouting and we learned a lot of stuff here. Yep. We know it's early, but we want we wanted to get down here and try it out. We've had consistent water levels. Um, I think we're on the we're getting closer to the time. Yep. What size hooks got on? We got eight on. We've caught a few big fish this time of year. Got 10 on, and then I think, I don't know, you got any fives out here? No. Nope, I don't have a single no. five. 
eights and tens out here. So. Brian B. Oh my God, so yeah. grateful. Ten dollars, Brian oh, B. Thanks, Brian buddy. B. You're boom, awesome. boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Thanks, Brian B. So okay, Brian B. Just for that, I'm gonna explain. I'm explaining this here. So this is a piece of moon eye, which is a fairly soft bait. It's 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 actually a lot tougher than shad. But see these scales right here. We we witnessed this thing get get hit two or three times. Now, if it was a small fish, you would have seen you would have seen bite marks and scales would have been missing off this thing. But it wasn't. So this was a big fish that sucked it in, spit it out. They just weren't ready yet. Maybe we were just a little bit too early, but I think they're gonna do it. We're in a sure in a heck of a good spot, guys. I'm excited. The closer I got to this place, uh, yeah, the more excited I was getting. Oh, professional overrun. Nice. We're still holding pretty good. We're using a, I don't know, is it a 40 pound hurricane anchor? Sucked at school pretty, yeah. Sucked at school pretty good at fishing. Gotcha. <laughs> Funny you say that. My I, my grandparents. My You're grandpa talking to the school skipping. <laughs> right yeah, there. I skipped more school to go fishing than I know anybody. Woo. My grandma used to wake me up in the morning and ask me, "Do you want to go to school or do you want to go fishing?" I got the cooler <laughs> packed with sandwiches and zebra cakes, and I'm like, "We're going fishing." <laughs> Dude, same thing happened with this. Look, they're not channel cats and they're not small blues. That's still there when 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 the oh, yeah. when the spleen is still in it and it gets hit. Those are actually big fish. Believe that or not, because big fish don't peck stuff. They just they just sometimes won't take it. Uh oh, getting hit. I'm going through Asian carp or a pile of blues, I mean the whole way down, uh, 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 like this. I wouldn't think they'd be Asian carp clear out here. Remember that big pile of fish that we bought mm -hmm. when we sat here? They were pretty high in the column. I wouldn't think that they'd be Asian carp, but they might be. Maybe we're getting lined. You might be right. Normally the Asian carp hang out way over there close to the bank, but with this water low, they could be coming out like this. So I may, I may be retracting my entire statements about those baits not being bit up and we had bites and it did seem a little early. So we may be getting in line. We may have to move off this spot. We might. One thing about fishing, it's never guaranteed and you always have to keep your mind open as to what could actually be happening. Has, what's up? What up, Has? Has is in the Ooh, house it's... and the thunder rolls. Dude, did you hear that? That's awesome. Sunfish. I fished with my grandmother more than any other person, even my dad, numbers of times, 400, until so I was 15. Yeah, yeah, my grandma, she, my grandma raised me and she took me fishing a lot. Good people, salt of the earth, man. We got several spots to move around here, guys. So this is pretty much the first anchor, get live. We didn't even know if we we're gonna have a signal out here. You guys all know about that. As I wanna tell you too that once I got home from work, I got to watch that kayak review more, you know, quietly and, and sit there and focus on it on the TV. That was an awesome review you did on that Hobie kayak, man. That kayak is sick. That is one of the most awesome kayaks I've ever seen. And the review is beautiful. Doing good, bro. This might be the only time I've ever seen Asian carp out here. And what, what worries me is I was I was taking yeah, the man. power line and dragging, 100, dude. dragging it along the, uh, the bottom. And it was constantly getting, you could feel it running into fish. And I don't like that, so we may end up moving. Yeah, we're we, gonna move. We thought we were on a great spot, and maybe we're not. You want to move out? To so the epic end? catfish puts us on a bunch of Asian carp. That's what you need to do is make this feel what you feel. Look, it's pouring up there, buddy. Uh oh. Way up north. Oh yeah. 
hopefully we can dodge all this. I just spent four hours rigging up electronics and other stuff. I'm gonna be dragging baits tomorrow morning on the Potomac. Awesome, man. Cut bait, can't wait. <laughs> Yeah, we're on Mississippi, Robert. I don't think you're talking to us, James. Robert James. Clean, oh. clean, clean. Clean. I see a move in our near future. Unless we get something going. 15, 20 minutes, we're moving? Yep. Mississippi. That's right, Peace City. That's the case. And, and the one thing about Asian carp, if you guys don't have them in your waters, when you mark them, they're like this big. So if they're low to the bottom, and they're, we didn't mark a bunch of fish that, yeah, we, we marked a pile of fish, but that appeared to be more like a big ball of bait fish with some bigger fish there located just off the bottom. But if, if we're getting lined like that by this many fish, that, I mean, usually we should be hooked up by now with something. You know, whether they were, you know, channel cats, whether they're smaller blues, or maybe there's some flatheads mixed in or, or whatever. But if you're getting lined in Asian carp uh, territory like we are, now that looks like a takedown there, but I don't know if it is. Because sometimes what happens is they actually get caught on the line with their, with their gill plate. Let me demonstrate that. So this is not an Asian carp. It is a, um, okay. so it, it's a grass carp. So Asian carp since they're filter feeders and they're down there eating zooplankton, their gill flaps are constantly flaring. And as they go back in the current, they get caught on the line. And that's when you see the doom doom because they head shake and, and come off of it. We've seen them do it. So it's, it's kind of an interesting thing. 72 people in here. What the heck? Oh yeah, that's awesome. We just got a, a bite out in the 30 foot hole, but it wasn't impressive. It looked almost more like a line, like the fish is hitting it. This is one of the weirdest anchors I've ever seen. Watch that rod. I like to watch it touch the water. I would too. Tell Tim that my fish is cooler than your fish. <laughs> what fish is? <laughs> oh, the sunfish said that. Assassin. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know about that because I have about a two-pound flathead. Oh. And he's already dug an entire hole on one side, a hole on the other side, and he's sitting on top of the mountain. So it sounds like his fish will eat your fish. <laughs> These aren't gar bites either. This is not gar territory. Not that there wouldn't be an occasional gar around. Especially with lower, because normally this is a lot speedier current. <laughs> I seen P City on lockup. He ran the block. You know, I <laughs> when I saw P City, I I, I kind of got that. <laughs> Dude's a thug. P City's out there like, hold my pocket. <laughs> Hold my pocket. <laughs> no luck fishing Lake Texoma last night till 3 a.m. Two days before, caught a 30. Good luck, guys. And that's from Catfish573. Come on, take her down. That can't be a lie. 81 people in here? Seriously? On a Saturday? You guys are great. <laughs>
There's none better on all of YouTube than the catfish community. There is none better. You guys ain't right. You guys ever seen Tom Segura in the Scared Straight, his routine on the com comedy thing? That's pretty funny. They scared straight with those kids and went to the federal prison. Scared straight was funny as hell. Eighty people in here, fifty thumbs up. Yes, you're right about that, man. The catfish community is the best fishing community on YouTube. I've never seen. I've never seen anybody. You know, I'm pretty partial. Other communities. I, I'm partial too, but I haven't seen any other communities that that pay attention. They actually listen. They're interested in actually the fishing. They're not into the chat to do some stupid comments. Give 20 more minutes. It will be 120, 130 people. Brian B says. Oh my gosh, that'd be awesome. Dustin Dodd, Moon Eye, Asian Carp, and Live Bluegill. Yep. We got a cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a. So we got another uh, a common carp to cut up, maybe. And so, so Dustin, we're actually in the center of the dike. The tip is out there. No, basically the armpit is over there and you know Stephen Adams says tell epic that Mount Hood uh, fishing more the flatheads out on the on the miss way down south yeah I know that dude yep yep using carp yep cut we, carp we've got it we've got carp uh, we don't actually need to use it yet because we do have Asian carp out there and cat Asian sass carp. cat fishing's at work tonight I'll be watching on and off all night awesome awesome Asian carp is a great double duty bait. I've caught flatheads on them and I've caught a lot of big blues. So we're gonna stick with that at this point, but we've got common carp, we've got grass carp. We got every carp that is in the water almost. Carp from every country. We got European carp, we got Chinese carp, we got Japanese carp. Oh, and we even have, we even have tiny little suckers that are about this big. Those are actually native though. Yeah, we only got a couple moon eye. We tried to get some, uh, we could get, we could go up to the barges in the evenings, the best to get those behind the barges. That's racist. <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> Robert James says something's racist. <laughs> I said something like that the other day in chat and everybody's like, well. Robert James sounds like Pelosi. <laughs> yep. I, I made a He's the one that, yeah, I, I've seen you and Robert James on there. <laughs> okay. We've got what a <sighs> River Hippie, it's good to have Epic Heroes to watch, ain't it, boys? Yes, sir. <laughs> Robert James crying, laughing. Brian Roush. <laughs> All the white bass. Flat Rock Flatheads, what's up? I see a move in about 10 minutes, boys. Yeah, I'm not liking this. Country boy, I want to come fish the barges with y'all. I want to come down there and have you cook me something. <laughs> Country boy's a chef. And he's a pretty damn good storyteller, too. 81, 54 thumbs up. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really liking this age of carp problem we got. Epic, Epic needs a bigger boat so we can all go. I do need a bigger boat. Let's get one of them big, huge carp John boat things. <laughs> that are like, <laughs> like 25 feet 20, long. 30 foot long. And like, yeah. like too long, too wide. We'll, to get double, we'll get double jets on the back. Yep. Like 80 feet. All right. So before we leave this spot, I'm going to throw this into the flathead area zone and see if we can't get one to go. Barge. Fish off a of barge. Yep. This area does not have too many barges. It's got some sunken ones, but right now they're all out of water. They're all high and dry. 40 guys fishing. That's a snag. Oh, yeah. It's a snag or a fish. <laughs> yep. I just put it at the, I'm tumbling it down the dike right now. Y'all should see, 
I actually turn this thing around so y'all can see the weather behind us for a second real quick. Yeah, it's pretty ominous. Check this out. It's raining up there. Tim Barnes, Pickwick, oh shit. I pushed something. The wrong thing. Pickwick Dam says, hello, caught some great eaters today. Congrats. I want to hit them old bridges, flatheads too. Oh yeah, buddy. Tell them, tell them how we were kind of worried that we weren't even going to be able to do it live because it didn't want to hook up, didn't want to let us do it. Yeah, we're way out here in BFE, I guess. It was kind of not looking like we're even be able to go live with the signal. Does it does it look all right? Sound all right, everybody? Let me get this thing moved a little bit. Let me get some more on this on the deal. Perfect. So Perfect. If, if if we were if we were experimenting like fishing a new zone, we'd have already moved. The only reason I'm staying is because this is on my milk run. This is one of the big big fish spots in this whole stretch. Um, there was a, there's another one up there, it's called Dead Man's Hole, but we got beat up so bad by the, the return waves, there was confused seas up there, and it, it I mean, it, it beat up just my about boat bumpers, yep. about ripped you out of the boat, I mean, we caught some fish up there just experimenting, but it, it, it was nothing to write home about. Yeah, no doubt. Usually, usually when there's big fish in Dead Man's Hole, it doesn't take you 15 minutes to find them and, and hook up with them. Yeah. I mean, there may be some stragglers. We may have to go up there a little bit later, but we're going to, there's a nice ledge between wing dikes all thanks, the way up here. Thanks, Muhammad. Oh, you guys are great. Great. Yeah, we're going to try, buddy. We kind of got some bad, you know, intel about uh, the population in this pool. It's not as no as good as normal, but we drove out here and we're putting we're putting our uh, poles down there. Wouldn't be the first time that we didn't put big fish in the boat when all the locals were saying you couldn't do it. I'm just not liking how these rods are acting. We're gonna give that one some time though. So, so we're we're, ba we're basically fishing for one fish right now because I threw it out so the hydraulics of a wing dike will eat out on towards the main channel eat out a deeper spot out towards the main channel but then there will be a lot of times a sheer wall that comes up before it gets shallow and a lot of times up on top That's of right, sand Jeremy. but it's clay at the base so I've actually thrown as best I can that live bait into the corner of what's going on so the wing dike is made of rock it goes down like this levels out with the bottom but then on the side it also shoots up like that before it goes up to 20 feet so I think I've got this one basically in the corner which for flatheads is absolutely one of the best spots you can be in now let's just hope there's one there and is gonna bite yeah Brian Roush we got a couple down rods that are have a hook up you know up this is the best we're gonna do for a suspended here in this current with the weight on the bottom you know a three-way type deal we got a couple of those out because we had big fish under the boat earlier. That's usually something that he does every time, especially if you see big fish under your boat moving about. That's right, buddy. Oh, boy. Missed. That was actually a fish out there. He said he's on beer, beer number six already. Slow down, buddy. 16? No, six. Oh, it's going to be a long night. Slow down, bud. Get something to eat. I think I'm gonna eat a sandwich right now too, well, before we move. Alright. We had what I think was our first actual bite and we ranged out to do it. Can't get any good bites right behind the boat. We got our drinks in the bait cooler. We don't have our sandwiches in there. Michael Toby, 
I've tried the rig which the barrel swivel and a snap weight attached the leader and I have increased my hookups 80%. Oh yeah. What? Awesome. Mike Chavez, I think I saw Mike Chavez. What's up, Mike man? Mike Chavez is in here? Awesome. Yeah. Ham and Swiss. Taste. <laughs> On white. <laughs> Mayo. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Prepare to get rocked. We got a racing boat coming. Dag blasted boat. Outdoors with Otis is in here. You know, peeps, this is uh this is this is one of the, the spots that I hate to pull off of. I've done it, I've done it many times, but it's also been one of those spots where <laughs> nothing else is going. What's that? Smitty said Swiss and he had a cute emoji. Oh. So uh it's been one of those spots where I've went all over the river and not done to my expectation expectations come back to this and actually pull off a big fish or two. So it's really difficult for me to leave because I have such a history on this very spot. Creel's question. Yeah. Mm. Question. Any thought process behind which type of bait goes in what position or is it sort of random? Right now it's sort of random until I start seeing something that tells me. And so far I've been seeing bites on Moon Eye and not very many bites on anything else. So that may be a thing where we're going to have to go try to gut it out for Moon Eye. And it's going to be miserable because the water's low. Moon Eye really aren't up here. And, but you know what? They might come up because I see lightning hitting the water up there. Woo! Come on. There we go. Yes. That right there was a Jedi fish. Come on. <laughs> yep, Brian, it's a it's a learning curve with them. Get you a good double action circle hook, circle hook so you have that, you know, that leeway. Left hand, I got a bite. In my right hand, I got a line. He's getting lined, yep. Got, getting and he's got a bite. Right, and a bite on the left. He's evidently set up on a, a massive pile of Asian carp with catfish around it. wouldn't be an epic catfishing trip without spilling a bunch of drinks. Made me snap my lid shut. <laughs> <laughs> Silver carp has been a hot me. bait around St. Louis lately. Caught a 52 the other day and some of my buddy got a 104. Well, we were told we should have went to St. Louis. And we just didn't quite have enough time. That's where we'll be heading next. Hell, we might even go there in the morning. You never know. Mm -mm. I don't have a single responsibility I couldn't put. I can't put off for catching big fish tomorrow. This is an experiment here. We know we should have went to St. Louis to begin with, but we weren't ready to take that, that trip. This was a nice little popover trip to come over here and get alive in, and hopefully pop a, a, a little blue cap, you know, or a big one or whatever. Eighty-four people, fifty-seven thumbs up. We're coming up on the first hour of our live. Hey. 
bend it. Jesus. Sixty-five yards, twenty-eight foot of water. Stephen Corley, Mississippi Life. Hit that thumbs up, he says. Eric Flowers says, you ever go to Wheeler? Oh yeah? Yeah, we had a video on Wheeler. Paducah, Kentucky, the blues are going crazy, Dominic Hollis says. Uh, yeah. 14 hours away from James me. Snow. Rhonda McDaniel. Fishes Wheeler Dam. Boy, they don't look good over there. Nope, it looks bad. It don't look good. I got umbrellas, but and there's like a big front coming in here, guys. Does that look scary to y'all? <laughs> I'll tell you what it looks we like. We might have to hunker down here in a minute. Nope, keep fishing, the committee says. It, it, looks, <laughs> it looks like we should be positioned on big fish before it hits us, but I don't think we are. Hey, what's this? Normal, this uh, oh yeah, oh it's a stink. It. Oh, I see. Sean just got hit by the stick fish. Probably uh, have to take you guys off this stand on cool. my plan of action. Kill the uh, power. I got a rain jacket with a bunch of freaking carp scales on it. That's how we like them in Mississippi. I'm gonna get this. All right, trade me the glasses for a bit so you can do all that. All right, ooh, this thing needs washed. All right, everybody. Yeah, that is a shelf cloud. We're fixing to get hammered. I'm sure. Sure of it. So how do we turn this light down? It's pretty bright. Want to wear my sunglasses. There we go. That's better. No, that's not so bad. I am. I'm, I'm, I'm smiling, but, but I'm on a mission. I'm telling you, that's why I named it that. It's, uh, you know, you, you get me down in, in, in big blue cat and flathead territory and I get on a mission and it's, it's pretty rough. I will uh, smile, but I need to put some big fish in the boat. That is my uh, mission. And, you know, you can have all the knowledge in the world and end up setting up on some stupid Asian carp. I thought that they were a little bit smaller than what we actually went on, but there was a number of big fish lurking around below it. And we just can't, geez, we just so far can't get that, get them to bite. Fish and mission, that's right. All right, so we're gonna take a, oh boy. Yeah, we're fixing to get freaking hammered, which, what's new? I just gotta make sure that, uh, oh, I also have to make sure to plug this phone in before it goes dead. That's actually a bite. Yep, yep. Y'all see that? Probably not. I was probably in the way. Show them those weather. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's fixing to. It's fixing. To, oh yeah. I do. I do kind of hope we get some straight down lightning. I do like that because it. Uh, yeah, kind of. I'm an adrenaline junkie. A little bit. A little bit of. Uh, 
little bit of heart palpitate, a little, little fear of, uh, of dying. It's, it's kind of good. That's right. It's Captain Ahab time. That's right. It's about time to, matter of fact, make sure nothing can blow out of the boat because we're going to get some super, we might get some super wind with this. attention what's going on because this whole tripod might get blown over oh yeah it's coming it's snatch coming the phone off there. huh yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna snatch the phone off here yeah it's 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 bad it is bad bad oh yeah yep take the tripod down look at that Woo! you can hear it whip you can hear it whipping through the trees right now Love this stuff. Love it. All right, sorry. Uh, how long is that wing dam from base to tip? It's about a hundred yards long, Creel. Oh, it's cold. Oh, oh yeah, the that. big cold front. Oh yeah. Look at that. It is, now, I don't see rain, but you know it's coming. There's all kinds of rain towards town. We got gators coming down. We got everything. Here it comes, blowing in our faces. Woo! <laughs> all right. I don't know how well this is going to work. Can you all hear that? Ah. Oh. Yep. Don't let the wind get my drink. Where's I my drink? I, I don't know. You better better pull it in. Pull it in here. Oh. Right. We're going to have snags up in the Yeah, area. we'll probably have snags. It's not too bad. Oh, yeah. Wind just blew our boat completely sideways. No, it doesn't look like it's going to last long. It's just a big front coming through, it's hopefully. It's a huge front. Huge front. <laughs> That looks wet up there, like real wet. Matter of fact, do we got anything that's going to get grounded? What is that? Okay. All right. Sorry, people, for the bad camera angles. Now we got blown back the other way. Well, for you guys that like dragon baits, that's what we're doing right 83 now. People 83 people riding the storm out. <laughs> Woo! Riding. Woo! That's an eye poke right there. Right <laughs> in the eye. I better put the <laughs> glasses Iowa. down. All right. So what do we got? Tony King, what's up, What's gents? up, buddy? Don't we're you wish you were with us right now on this scary-ass storm? It's not gotten scary yet, but it's... Nope, and, and we're not pulling the rods in until we catch a big fish or we get to move. I don't feel like setting up on a new area, especially if we're going to be doing, you know, wood covering. On, yeah, it is like Gilligan's Island. Yep, I like fishing in a storm too. After the storm, we are going to go in search of fish because it, it may be on the same wing dike. I decided to anchor in this particular spot because it has actually paid off during low water in the past, but usually later in the year. Seems we have some sort of weird phenomenon where the Asian carp that are normally up in the armpit against the shore have moved out here and are lining our baits. There are catfish uh, hanging around them, but nothing active enough to do anything, which is odd because I, the heat, uh, a uh, really hot couple of days for the storm really fires them up. So that tells me we're not really located in the right spot. And we're going to have to get on the right spot. Catfishmen never say die. We just keep keeping on. Whoosh. Which one of y'all is Ginger? Eric Flowers. I know it ain't me, and I know it ain't Sean. Must be you. 
Ah. Professor, yeah. So, let's take a look at this storm real quick. We got a little bit of lightning. We ain't scared of lightning. Hopefully this will, yeah, it's nice and yeah. bright in there, so we know the sun's behind that, yeah. hopefully. All right. Hold Professor on to this. Gilligan. Hold, hold on to this, and, and I'm gonna recast some rods. We drug them out of position. He's got the eye, you gotta have him in the eye. Oh yeah. Yikes. Well, I need my reading glasses, everybody. Can you launch out of Maple Island, Melvin Price, and Rudy yeah, that's Astorga? You, you, you can. Right now, I don't know if you can. Maybe you can. They got they got better water levels down there. I do believe. Eighty-four people in here riding the storm out. Comes the rain. I'd love to put new bait on this. Bait's almost like it's been cooked. Gosh, I don't want to waste new bait on where I what I think. You know, you know what? Let's get a bluegill. I want to. I want to cast that out in that deep hole out there. I got no it's hands. the old forehead hook. So the forehead hook, when you're throwing sideways behind the boat, I usually put it behind the tail or behind the door. Thing. Umbrella working for you? Yeah, I got another one. It's good. I'm good. Folks, we knew this was coming. We said we're going anyway. I just hope it blows out of here quick. You know what? You might be able to set this tripod up and clip these fuckers on it. Under the umbrella, you know? Yeah. Can we help you? Ooh, that's what happened. Yeah, you're gonna have to stare at you. Just gonna have to stare at you. We can turn them. You can kind of spread the jaws.
Dude, that that real wet stuff is coming our way. Huh? Oh shit. Here's another umbrella. Let's get that thing popped. Sit down and okay. next to this thing. Alright. And then we'll kind of like try to build a that is a super swamp. Build a deal like this because it's coming yeah. from up river. Protect the phone at all costs. Yes. That's too high. Oh! Too high. You have to bring it down to its latchy area. Push that metal thing up and it'll pop into a joint there. Okay. About turned it inside out. Uh -huh. There we go. That's one I found uh, by the interstate. <laughs> Somebody lost it. Let me get around here and see what's going on. We got rods popping everywhere, but I, I think they're just getting lined. A laughing catfish in the house. Johnny Cleary. Two Stan. Stanimal, what's up? Stan, we've got an epic storm upon us. It ain't pretty. 87 people, 71 thumbs up. Where's the camera? There's a camera right here. I can't, I don't wanna, I wanna, there we go. Yeah, we got some rain to wait out here for a minute, guys. Be patient, 89 people. They're all waiting for somebody to get struck by lightning. <laughs> I was just watching those on YouTube like a week or two oh, yeah. ago. People get struck, whew. These people just, they just drop like a headshot mule deer right there on the ground. Yep. We just drink more and stomach it. Dude, that cotton candy is the best. It is the best. With that, oh man. This stuff is awesome. Yeah, Brian, it's his Luna little peeing on us. Could be worse. Well, it's going to get worse here in a minute. I don't know. I hope it we goes, it goes that way. We're on a sweet spot now, hopefully. If not, we'll be alright. I'll tell you what we need. We need we need a takedown during this epic freaking storm here. That almost looks like one. Yeah, I don't want one we can see. I want one we can hear. I know. Pop boom, big fud. Ba boom! Definitely after the storm's over, we're gonna reposition out of this ball of Asian carp and the few fish that are surrounding it. And we are gonna try to mark good fish once again and get right on them and put the baits in their faces. Here comes yeah, some rain. Here comes the, the super rain. My phone's probably about dead. It's been running for an hour. Once we get past this, hopefully we'll have a gorgeous evening. <laughs> this was the 50% chance of rain. Which on the river we all know is a 100% chance. <laughs> What's everybody saying? <laughs> this Mr. Anderson's here. Sunfish assassins in the house. The fish are coming as soon as it quits. Yeah. I hope. I've seen it. Before the storm we're in the eye the eye of the storm look at that that is a beautiful picture and 
back out. It's fixing, it's, it's fixing to drown us for a little bit. But not yet. I'm getting too much rainwater in my drink. Diluting the effects. Oh, look at that. It's got the light on. And you can change the deal on it, too. Yeah, go a little less. Keep going. That's oh. that yellow. -ish. Yellow. Is that yellow better? Let me see the yellow. Yeah, that's better. Oh, listen. Riders on the storm. Bam, 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 bam. You know what? Riders on the storm. The only thing could have made this better is if we were <laughs> actually on big fish. <laughs> Dang it. Ninety people in here, seventy-four thumbs up. We're riding the storm out. Ninety people, ninety-one people. This is the kind where you can get hail going. Fishing rods and lightning do not mix. Lightning doesn't really mix with anything, really. They mix really well on epic catfish. Last time on Epic Catfish, we got grounded by rain, and then Sean got Mark not in the house. Mark not. What's up, buddy? What's up, Epic and Sean? Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Catfish Weekly. What's up? <laughs> We're sitting here in the rain like a couple of chicks with umbrellas. As it's the freaking wind and lightning. We got and gear, you know. Yeah, we're protecting the camera. Pretty much like we're just like hovering around it. Here, check it out. Does the yellow hey, hey, keep... Hey, hey. I think I got one going on that light bait. Seems to be chewing on it a little bit. I hope your cases up there are fucking waterproof. They're not. Your camera cases? Oh, my cases are, yeah. Yeah. They're waterproof. But I, I do have that, that, uh, that one battery uh, thing that's not waterproof in, in that thing right there. Big drops of rain right there, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ninety-three people was sitting with us in the storm. <laughs> That's awesome, people. Woo! That we got these umbrellas, dude. Dude, without these umbrellas, we would have smoked. That thing would have we'd have had to shut it off. Turn the bilge pump on in a minute. Mm -hmm. Don't want to get waterlogged in here. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. California angling and outdoors. I'd literally be in the storm with you guys for an epic adventure. It is an epic adventure. Now all we need is a giant fish to take a rod down and it's the story of the year. James Kern caught a hundred pound blue cat where you are fishing. Oh yeah. Oh, you know they're here. I bet that was a battle. Whoa, y'all see that lightning? Oh yeah. I hope that's on there. I, I want to watch it. Oh, 
Glad I'm wearing my swimming trunk. I'm going commander, so it doesn't really bother me too bad. Yeah. Look at the rain going over us there. Oh, yeah. Looking at all of oh man. That's pretty I cool. I wish they could see that. I bet they can. Maybe, yeah. Almost. Yeah, Is it, it lightening it, up? It, it ain't totally gone. It no. ain't totally gone. Another 15, 20 minutes, guys. I think we should be back on back on track. Scheduled we'll, to yeah, move. And we're gonna we're gonna try to put some baits in front of faces. We're gonna do a move. Ninety-one people. Awesome. So let's tell some stories, Sean. I've never owned a scale. I think this sort of changes. Like the five pound channel is probably like seven or eight. Yeah, scales are good to have around to freshen up, but usually you can guess them pretty close. If this gets out of here, we're going to have a beautiful evening, guys. Yep. It's always guess board. high, Sunfish, talking about weights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> always guess high. I always try to guess low, P-City. I hold them close to the camera and make shit up. So, one time we were down in by St. Louis, and we got rained on so hard, we... We actually drove the boat onto shore underneath a gigantic barge that had like one of the big uh, scoopy front ends. And we sat there for an hour and a half as, I mean, it would have literally, it, th there was so much rain, it would have swamped our boat. Yeah, those whisker skeeker scales are pretty nice. I got one of the cheapy deals from uh, Bass Pro. It goes up to 88 pounds. Here comes the wind. Oh, we got, oh my God. That was an awesome takedown, dude. But he didn't get the hook. Did y'all see that? No. I don't know. Maybe you should, no. it's the corner one. Yeah, there. My whisker seeker never settles. They don't have like a lock button or something on there. Dude, score on these umbrellas, dude. You're the man. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. <laughs> you know, even though it's storming, this is pretty enjoyable. We got 88 friends. It's in the storm boat with us. It's popping everywhere, but none, no takers. Is that a live one? Yeah. We're mostly getting lined. Those people are just standing over there getting poured on. Yep. They got rain jackets on. It looks like yeah. there. Wow, it's not over yet. It's I was lightening up. Be narrow. It's lightening up a little bit over here to the west.
Come on, takedown. Just one. Just one. Just one takedown. Come on. I know what lives here. We just gotta hope they're willing to bite. Country boys, got, I got you all on an 82 inch big screen. Jesus. That's awesome. He don't have to go to the movies. Can you guys hear the lightning and thunder or is it just the rain on the umbrellas? Just rain. Just rain. Yeah. Yeah, David, I wish they'd pull one down here. You know, in all my days, most of the time, while it's raining, I don't get a good pull down. Usually it's right before, if I'm positioned correctly, or it's right after. I'm not confident that we're positioned correctly right now, and it's driving me absolutely back crazy. Something happens, you take it. I'll I take will. this. Yep. You got it. And I'll do the double. Got it. Some point, I know. I'm hoping this gets out of here so we can get a charger yeah, on that yeah. thing. Where's the cord at? Well, it's in one of my boxes. It's probably in the big box that's uh, waterproof. Mm. One of them boxes or nope, the one up front? The big one up front. I'll get it right now. Watch that cord. Okay. Hello. Right oh, there. that one's weird. Watch that cord. We gotta get you guys plugged in so we can keep streaming here. That GoPro. just left these darn chairs in the truck. Let me get the battery pack. That's awesome. Yeah, this thing is like 
five times the amount of. If you want to, I like, could just stick it in the bag for now, or actually, we can put it right on here. Okay, we got umbrellas on it. All right. I don't know if that's charging, but I think it is. <laughs> Should be. I hope it is. You know what? I think it's clearing off, too. Let's go. Let's go. Two stands loves it. This is freaking epic fishing. The only thing we're missing is the big fish. We're going to probably reposition here when we can. Not that this spot is bad, but... Nope, traditionally this spot's great, but today it's not really treating us all that well. Eighty people, eighty thumbs up. Winds kind of change a little directions. My sail's acting so, like a sail. So this this wind is so rough that we're actually perpendicular to the dike now. We were behind it like this. It is weather vane just clear over like this and every one of our lines are sideways. I think it's this edge of the edge of the storm, the backside. Must be swirling a little yeah. bit because we've got. Uh, look at that. We're all sideways to this thing. It's actually blowing this up a little bit. All right, I got to reel these in. All we'll do is snag up and lose a bunch of shit. Kevin's in here. What's up, buddy? I can't stand the rain at my window. I don't know that one. Thank you. Low battery. Huh? Oh, it's not tripping then. Okay. I don't know if that's true. I don't know. Maybe somebody can tell us how to check and see if the battery's good. You know what? I think I think you can. I think you gotta turn it like this. Nope. Orientation is locked. What did, what did, what did they say? Nothing. Nothing.
No, uh, Nicole, I don't know. It might be. Dude, we're kind of we're south we're south we're south we're southwest in the coal on the mississippi river what good are you i haven't figured that out yet Pretty good at drinking beer. Bites, but nothing that impressive. No more Arnold Palmer for me. Yeah, I'll probably just do straight tea next time. I don't want to put you out. I know how much hard work you do to mix the lemonade and that tea. I think we're facing the right way now. Yeah, finally. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, this stuff has come back and circled back and hit us again. Oh, well, now we're facing the other way. All right, everybody. Isn't this awesome? Da, 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 da. Eighty-five people still hey, here. Hey, five bucks! Boom, Two boom, stands. boom! Stands, boom! <laughs> Stand, you got your awesome. So so far, we're out here getting our asses handed to us in the rain. And you guys, 85 people are still here. You guys are the greatest. The greatest. All right, dude. We're, we're about to get about to move because I just can't take this anymore. So first it rained up from upstream to downstream and now it's raining from downstream to upstream. It's crazy. And hopefully, hopefully my uh, my phone's charging. Epic music, that's right, Palmetto. Nicole says she does not support Sean. I don't support Sean. Is that the Nicole that you know? Yeah, the one down oh, there awesome. at the, yeah, at the yeah. Tisqua, at the uh, yeah. Kelly's place. Sing it, Kevin. Sing it. I always tell people that Nicole's not the worst waitress I've ever seen. <laughs> so, we've pointed this way. Boom, boom, correct. boom, Tom, Tom Harris. Harris. Papa T. Papa T, your awesome storm fishing fun. And we've pointed this way. And we've pointed the other way. The only way we haven't pointed is directly upstream yet, and that's about to happen. I just want to stand up and fish. I don't want to be under here. I know, I don't know. But I do like being being dry. I'm not dry at all. Oh, <laughs> I got the swamp on, I, I on got my the seat. super swamp. I feel like I just got out of the bathtub. I'm used to 
small. You know, we did before the live, I think somebody asked if we caught any fish, and what we did is, is we searched for uh, fish in prime location, and we found them here. But it seems that there's too many Asian carp piled up below this wing dike to uh, specifically target fish in any sort of uh, organized manner. So we're gonna move. There's there's fish here, and there's some big fish here. But they're, the Asian carp, they, they move from the, the shore in the eddy out here to the middle, and they're running into our lines. Woo! Woo! Did you guys hear that one? Ryder's that was own storm. Freaking thunder boomer there. Woo! <coughs> Ryan's in the house setting hooks. What's up, buddy? Ryan, what's going on? <coughs> Mama. Cody Robinson, what's up? Well, yeah. We we're just getting ready to move, and uh, we are uh, we're hunkered down under Ella, our umbrellas. What does that sound? I don't know what that sound is. The rate of the water coming from the upstream or downstream. Well, you know, 90 people in here. Folks, that's one thing you got to do. Even even though we're hunkered down underneath umbrellas protecting the equipment, always got to look upstream, always got to look downstream because, you know, especially with rain like this, it could it could like up a tributary, unlodge an entire tree and come down and freaking crush you. I mean, I've been on this spot when we've had large trees hooked to the anchor rope and we've had to get them off there or cut the anchor rope. We didn't have to cut it. We we're actually, we had Garrett, my oldest son, which was strong enough to get that monster tree off of the anchor because it was starting to sink the front of our boat. To check if it's charging touch to hold down the very top of the To check if it's charging, touch and hold the very top of the screen and pull down. There should be a battery symbol. So up here. Yeah. All I see is a volume. He doesn't like my fingers at all. Should have a lightning bolt on it. <laughs> yeah, I don't see it, bud. We're trying, and all we see is the volume bar. Yeah, we caught a couple of channels earlier up up at the dam, and uh, now we've been on this wing dike, uh, getting a little pecked at and lined by some Asian carp, and uh, we were contemplating a move right before this storm came in. So we're kind of hunkered down, protecting the equipment. Got 90 people in here. We're just chilling on the umbrellas with you guys. But as soon as this quits, we are going to go. We are going to continue our oh. mission. I can't wait to. If this gets out of here, I think we should have a beautiful night, guys. I just don't like how it swirled back around us. Because look, look what. I mean, it's coming this direction now. And it's just a mess. The clouds like stop moving. It's like it's stalled right on us. Thanks, Stan. You know what? It's pretty light right now. Can you, if you can take care of the equipment, I can get us moved and get new baits out. What do you think? Are you sure? Yes, I can do it. No problem. I got this. I'm gonna get us on some fish. Ooh, that's an eye poker right there, buddy. Oh, look at Woo! that thing. That thing's about a killer. Okay. She just bought this thing too. Yeah, if, if you can man this, I'm gonna try to get us moved, get some new baits out. God dang it. Get some new baits out and get us, get us, uh, Position. Yeah. All right. 
It says 10% battery remain. that say output output okay yep all right let's try that. usb c what's the charge charge yep yep charge okay still there we go um what's that that's just the volume still yeah it's the play Boom! Four dollars from Nicole. Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. Be safe, man. Yeah, thank Nicole's you. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, Nicole. I'll probably see you Tuesday. All right. As far as I know, this thing's on. I, I can't. I can't really tell. But there we go. Is it there, there it is. Right here, twelve percent. And what's is that? A little lightning bolt right yeah. there? Is that it? Uh, yeah, it's charging. Yay! All right, time to move. Time to move. Yeah, we found it, bud. Make some coleslaw or some macaroni salad, Nicole. Potato salad would be good, too. <laughs> no. Stan, you're the man. Sunfish Assassin, $5. Boom! Sunfish Assassin, say, him say... Watch that cord. Yeah. No, Uncle Lou, we just drove two and a half hours and we got 84 people in here. This thing should pass and, and we should have a good night. It just hung around a little longer than, than expected, this rain. As soon as it gets out of here, man, we're going to give it our best shot. He's looking for fish right now. Yeah, Ryan, you see it on the radar. Look at Keokuk area, Warsaw, Illinois. Eighty people, eighty six thumbs up. Ryan says it's moving south. And it's just hanging around here. It was starting to lighten up over to the west. Watch that cord when you dismount. G-Style Fishing, what's up? 30 minutes should be good, Ryan says. Thanks, buddy. Woohoo!
What up? Oh my god, that's an awesome spot. Did you mark? Clear as clear as bell down at Melvin Price. Jack down in ninety four. Yeah, we were we almost said screw it and left, but we uh, we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna contemplate what we're gonna do in the morning. We might be down at Melvin Price in the morning. Who knows? Depends on how late we're up here, but uh, either or. We've done this uh, trip before. Pop over here and then pop down to Alton. Because of the rain one time. Yep. And we ended up having an awesome trip. But the things aren't so fired up uh, up here, I don't believe, as far as blue cat action. We'll, we'll see, but we had a local guy talk about the population not being as good at this point. Or they're not as fired up, but I fish with Epic Catfish and usually he can you know, pull one out. Okay, so what in the world did I do with that drift? Line? Yeah, we're charging. We're up to 17. Later, Jeremy. Jeremy's leaving? Yeah. Too boring for Jeremy. I'm neglecting my drink over here. <laughs> the hell? Oh Lord, cotton candy bang. Lord have mercy, that's good. Yeah, Cody. We caught our biggest one on that canal sitting in the rain. We're listening to music, under umbrellas. Don't worry, be happy. Got a 50. I usually do pretty good on that canal, especially after the rain. Like I said, we get through this rain here, we're gonna have a pretty nice little evening. He's putting out the drift shock. We're anchored. Shock, sock. It'll fill up the water. It's kind of floaty. Yeah, Mike. We do deserve a donkey. Well, ram it up on shore and cast out the bat. All right. We'll see. We'll give it a minute or two. We should have about. But we're like getting pushed up. Straight. We should have about 20 more minutes of this. He said. Okay. I could spend 10 minutes since he gave us a weather report. Ryan setting hooks, crossing eyes. Awesome. Yep. Time is it? 
thirty, nine o'clock. Seventy-two people. They're starting to straighten out. Socks actually kept no sock is just sitting dead. Ooh, whatever that is underneath the boat. It's like a tree. We're turning, ain't we? No. I think so. No, not really. Worst thing about fishing in between dikes at night, it's difficult to see the current versus the wind. Can you turn on your back lights, getting something else to look at back there, maybe? Yeah, well. Yeah, the other one will probably be all right to you. I think we're getting about, about good. <laughs> what do you mean? About as far as the yeah. rain. I think it's I'm about, it should too. be ready to stop. We may have to reposition because I don't think we're going to turn the trigger. There's some turn there, but there ain't a lot. Your stock's not open. I hate it when your sock doesn't open. I know. Well, it's got a floaty spot. And if the floaty spot's on top or on bottom, then it doesn't catch it. Yeah, just sprinkling a little bit, bud. Yep. Just getting into sprinkles. I really like what I marked back there. I okay, can't wait. I'm gonna get up and move around in a minute. I'm getting stove up and give out sitting here on this cooler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rogue freaking wind coming this through. This wind is just not in our favor. But let's see what happens. Wind's getting worse. Where did I, where did I leave that uh, light? Right here. We're starting to cock around a little bit. Hold this umbrella real quick with you. Yeah. I think we're pretty much good. I think we'll be good. Get all this tightened up, right? We're gonna have to move anchors though. That battery pack. Oh, sorry. As long as it didn't stop the uh, charge. charge. Our drift sock's trying, but it ain't getting the job done. We're still charging. Twenty-four percent. Good. What the? Uh oh. Swipe back up and then hit the YouTube thing, I think. I just need to be swiped away. That's what I was doing before. You just swipe. There we go. There we go. Boom! Boom! All right. Hold this. I got to get Tom this. Harris.
It's a funky umbrella. It is a funky umbrella. Tip of the dike down there? Yeah, but dude, look, look at all these fish. Right, 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 right. Active feeding position and everything. But you need to find some current. Yep. We got current out here. I was just hoping that ledge would have no current in it. just really doesn't. Unless these are all Asian carp, but why would they be in 23 foot of water right off the bottom? In feeding position. Like in feeding position. the wing dike we looked at earlier. It's up to you, bud. It's not very far. You want to have a buoy on it? Feet, 
to nine to eight feet in two boat lengths. Right. I dared pledge you a path here. Yep. I think we're going to be great. I think we're going to be great too. Because it's already switching this so it's pushing this out. Yep, we're going to be fishing that way right there. Yep. Seventeen feet. Get these guys around here so they can see this finder. Mm -hmm. nice. Now we're gonna try to get on this dike just right. 17-3. I don't know if they can read it or not. We're starting to swing around. We're coming around, Captain. Coming around. Still 16-17. Yep. We're about to climb it. We're in front of the dike yet? Or Not yet. We're, we're still, still 16 and a half. Yep. Yeah, we're still in front of it, yes. But we're gonna start climbing it here in a little bit. Climbing mean that boom. Yep. 15, here we go. But now we're going up it. Good. 14. 13. Spike into 12. Yep. And we wanna go. 11. Okay. 10. Yep. 9. Yep. Eight and a half. Okay. Eight foot, seven, seven foot, seven okay. foot, seven. Seven foot, nine. Now we're right at the very top. Eight, five. Let's Starting see. to go down it? Eight, five, yeah. Okay. We're right on the crown of I'm it. I'm going to hold. And then? Eight, now it's nine foot. So, yeah, we're right on the precipice. Okay, so I'm going to pull us up because we're... We're not really, the anchor's still in the sand. I need to catch the front of it. God, okay. So I'm just gonna drag in the sand until we... Yep, we're going the back up to the, to the, what the hell was that? I don't know. That was like an explosion, dude. It was an explosion. That was an explosion. All right, I'm still dragging the anchor. Where are we at on depth? Nine, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We're, we might be too short anchored on this because I'm like pulled up to it. Are we on the front or the back? We're on the front, but now we're, I mean, yeah, now we're 16. 16, 5, yeah, we're on the front. Yeah, definitely way on the front, but. Caught in the keeper? Probably. I gotta contact this wing dike, because otherwise this sand will just keep slipping back. Yeah, we're held. All right, how many feet you got? 14.4. Okay, so when I let back, do we go deeper or shallow? Oh, we're gonna go shallower. 14 straight, 13 something, let's go. Yeah, we're just coming up the, f the face of it. 13, four, 12, 11. Now we're coming up it right now. We're right up into the saddle of it, nine feet. Yeah, right around here, bud, seven. Okay. Right about as it's Tell me when we start going down, then I'll pull us up just a little okay. bit. Okay, we're at seven, four, five, seven, seven, seven. We're right on the very top of it. Seven, seven, seven. We're on the very top of it. It's pretty wide. Now it just said eight, eight, five. Okay. So yeah, now we're crowned it. 
eight five. Are we holding? Oh yeah, because I, I reached the uh, I reached the base of the dike. Beautiful. Yep. Look at there. There's even a fish on top of it. Yep. There it is. All right. So let's get this boat organized a little bit. Get ready to fire out some baits. Okay, I'm gonna turn the dikes on the side of the boat. This is going up front, so we may need this back deck. Yeah, we we marked some hellacious fish. Yeah. Right, right, right there. All right, so. It's dark. We're not going to mess around. We're getting a donkey shad out. I do need to run my, uh, oh, run this. Here, you want to cut it up in here? Yeah. Or you can mess let's, that uh, up. Let's, let's plug that into, there's a, there should be a, like a brown plug right there. Yeah, right here. Yep, got it. All right, so we might as well just do this live. So I'm going to cut a nice, ooh, chunk. Nice big James River shad head. I'm going to cut a nice body piece. Stan mailed us those shads. Yeah. Thanks, Stan. Okay, so this Donkey is, this is time, generally folks. what uh, I used to use on the James River back in the day when I used to go. So yeah, it's real nice and fresh, still real slimy, and hopefully, let's keep our fingers crossed that we got some monsters down there. And uh, yeah, all right, so that's one. So that's just, that's three baits. We want six baits out there, so I think what I wanna do is I want to, let's do, let's do a live bluegill. So might as well just throw him into the bucket. Do a live bluegill. Let's do the big dumb drum head. Where is that? Oh, it's right here. Somebody said that they had. Somebody wanted to put a drum head on. On the drum head. All right, That's so we got the big, big drum head. Hey, can you turn that to uh, lower? Yeah. Control? Like the light lower? Yeah. Here, I can do it. Is it right here? There we go. All right, so we got a big big dumb drum head we're gonna saw that thing off that bluegill will be just fine matter of fact why don't you take one of those down rods and hook that bluegill up comes the drum head all right so we got four cut baits one live bait let's take that Yep, that's perfect. Is that a five off? No. It's an eight. Okay. Eight off. Good. Let's forehead hook him. Deep enough, he ain't going anywhere. And just uh don't put him directly on top. Just kind of I'll move that rod right there. You like it now? Kind of slop him out over here a little bit. Slop him out. Yep. That's a technical term, by the way. Right slop here, him slop right out like there. That? Yeah, yep, just like that. It hit bottom already. Yeah, I know. And we, we may need to go back a little bit more. I don't feel all that confident. I mean, I do, but... It's pretty wide, the top of this. It is pretty wide. But it shoots straight down. I mean, straight down. Okay, so we got another... We got another down ring. So we're going to put this at the face. Got a big ten on. All right, so the bottom goes like this at about 25, 26 feet, and it shoots straight up right behind the boat. So we are going to take one of these, the big shad head, hook him right through the eyeballs. I've never had a problem with that before, and we are going to see if we can tempt a big monster on this rod. Which this rod, if we get one on, it'll be fun. I mean, it's 50 pound test. It's one of those arsenals, but it's the smaller version. Can you guys see that? So I'm gonna, 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 gonna swap this out. I'm pretty confident. Right where we need to be. Yeah, that was pretty good. That's a hole right there. Pretty good. Okay. 
You know what I hate about this? It doesn't have any light. It doesn't have any broken. That's all right. Thank you. Okay. So now, and yes, it does make a difference. We're going to forego the Asian carp for the shad. Ooh, actually, I've got a piece of moon eye right here. I'm going to, I'm going to go with the moon eye on this. And I am going to put it right through the eye socket down through like this. And we're gonna put this out in the, the tip hole out here. Okay. You shine that up, are you funny? Yep. Quite a bit of current out there, which is good. Now we got the uh, Got one more down rod right here. This is the one we're going to put on top. We'll put in that one. You want that uh, head? Nope. We're going to take a bluegill and we are going to cut it in half. Oh, I got a, I got a bluegill we can cut in half right here. It's still sliding. All right, so big fresh piece of moon eye. I'm gonna cut him about right in here. I'm gonna launch him out to where I mark those fish. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw that on purpose. Uh oh, is spinning on your end, Dale Hayslip. It doesn't seem to be frozen. Okay. I would say we should be, we're actually closer to town than what we were before. You know what we could do right now? We could set up that, that other line here. Okay. Another piece of that big shad. Dug up pocket. Is that fireworks? I guess. See that? A fireworks plant is exploding. back on the floor. Hold on. I got one more piece to put out. One more. I'm gonna wing it. It's just a three ounce. I don't need a huge bait. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna get one of these. Yeah, you can put all those baits back. But I am gonna get a small sucker.
Now we netted these little dudes earlier at a warm water discharge. Yep, and there's a scale on the tip. So I'm gonna wing this out in flathead position. All right, what's going on in here, folks? Collecting my drink, that's for sure. 77 people in here. 101 thumbs up. Can you all see that good? I think so. I think I'm blocking the other one. That must be a grand finale or something. I am blocking that. Let me, let me sit here. Can we go higher with that? This go higher? Yeah, the the tripod. This part? No, I mean just the legs. Yeah. Because remember, like when we were on the other, we went a little higher, and we can see all the rods. So yep. And just match match these. Yep. Take this, this one down. down. No. Yeah, take that one down and flatten her out. Maybe that's good. Yeah. Dude, that light is awesome, dude. I know. I think it was cheap as hell, too. This is a Chinese version of what Brian B. reviewed and all that. can actually yeah dim it down oh you just dropped it that was definitely a bite I'm gonna let him what time? There we go. Yeah, we're getting settled, Mark. I think the uh, the storm's over. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I knew we got we got a beautiful night after this. Seventy six people in here. One hundred and three thumbs up. Fairy lights. CBC. Yeah. All right, everybody, keep your fingers crossed. They're getting blown all sideways. All right. That was not fireworks. I don't know what that was. Fucking Red Dawn. Maybe we're gonna take it over. <laughs> Where's their, the boat lights at? Are they in here? Like for the front? Uh, the what? green, the channel? Yeah, whatever. they are. I don't know if the front one's even working. No? But okay. It might be. If it's in there. I know the back one works. And yeah, the front one should be in here too. If it's not, it's in one of the compartments up there. that on if you want. There it is. 
and it worked. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, man, this little stand and lights are pretty cool. Art, one ton fishing. What's up, Art? new drink? Nope. Still doing. From under the cut bait. Gives you wings. There, there's like a level ball on here somewhere, but I can't remember where the hell it's at. I think we got it turned around or something. I don't know, camera, if it looks crooked or not. Yeah, Tony, I hope so. Pretty quiet right now. So far, we can only get bites on Moon Eye, too. We ain't got much Moon Eye. There's bite. Watch. Let's go ahead and take it down. Come on. Oh, you're kidding me. Is he coming towards us? No. He's, that one's getting ready to go down. I don't think that was a big tip. Here, here, here's a sure way to get a takedown. Come check out your messages up here and sit and chill up here and I'll watch them live. <coughs> All right, everybody, we knew this was a risk coming down. Jeez, I can't turn. Just might as well just look. Okay. Misadventures and catfishing. Sean, hey, what's going on? So, anyway, um, we knew this was a risk coming down here, but it's always a good risk because any time you take a chance, you could have something fantastic happen to you. So far, the only thing fantastic has been the storm and you all people, 79 people, 106 tons, thumbs up, and 86, 87, 98 in Super Chats. Yeah, uh-oh, Sean's getting up. We got some tappers. It is early still. No risk, no reward, that's right. I've always said that, Stan. I've never heard that before. Did you just make that up? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to have to do the professor thing like this. 
because every time I look over there, it's it's like somebody spit in my eye, like a camel spit in my eye. Stan is a poet. I'm glad to see you made it in here, Sean. It's like old times. Llama spit, exactly. P City. Epic Y. Hair wet. Did you jump in for a fish? Well, if you were in here earlier, Mark, you know. Yeah, it's wet. All right. So is everything else. Wow. I need a monocle. I like like just a one eye thing, like the like Colonel Clink. I'm watching him, bud. Okay, I know, but I, I can't help myself from watching, so I'll, I'll just watch this. So what do you guys got to say? Anything good? I'm gonna hand me my uh, donkey drink there. Well, hell yeah. We got a big fish moving underneath the boat. Hopefully he finds one of our baits. Hey, oh, 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 we got a takedown. Get him, Sean, get him, Sean. Unless it's a stick. Oh yeah. Oh, it came out. Oh no. It might've been sticky. No. Okay, first first real takedown. Dude, that was shallow. Yeah, it was shallow. So uh, put him back down. You popping him? Pop him out here a little bit? Nope, just do what we had before because that down. thing was took him straight down. Yep. All right, folks. So we had a we had a takedown, but it wasn't on camera, of course, because it's it's one of these up rods. He didn't have the hook, man. Nope, he did not have the hook. I don't think it was a big fish because it didn't act like a big fish. It maybe like what call, what Stan calls like a 32 incher. Oh, All right, yeah. we got the Red Bull going now. Everything's right. I thought it was it too, David Smith. Oh yeah. Ooh, oh. Didn't. oh, yep. <laughs> Did, don't even touch it. Okay. Oh, and look, he had it down. I'm glad I let off. Yep. Oh, yep. That's one thing about blues. If you pick up the rod and he feels that hook, you almost never get another shot at him. But if you can back off, if you touch it, and I've seen it time and time again. Sometimes they'll come back, not always, but sometimes they will. Raymond finally leave. What's up, Big Mike? Here he goes, here he goes, come on. Come on. Should I reel on him? Nope, not till he takes her down pretty good. Cause he's still tappy with it. That's like a little flathead. Yeah, but if he was a little flathead, there'd still be back into it. Switch machines, misadventures. This is what I dreamt of when I was coming Art, down. what up? Lightning in the yeah. background. Yeah, oh yeah. This is what we, we want. Lightning in the background. This is what we want. Lightning in the background. Sitting on a dike yep. on the Mississippi yep. River with a huge drop right here. Yep. Let's go. Let's go. This is, is, it's pretty much a straight down drop. So right underneath the boat, it's only eight foot, right to the back. And then right off the back, it basically just shoots down into 28 foot of water. Love the lightning, I do too. As long as it's off in the distance, you got that right. I've had some of my best fishing trips with lightning in the background. Sean equals rain man. What? I don't know if, if it, P City, was you talking about the Sean in the boat or the Sean in the chat? Sometimes, Art, sometimes. It really does. I mean, I, I went through stretches where some of my biggest fish that we caught was during lightning, but it was during the prime time. This is not quite prime time yet for where we're at. Our fish, our, our big blue cats are highly mobile and they don't necessarily, I find that they come up here better during low and stable water than in high water usually it's by about the first weekend in august we can really count on big blues being up this far so um you know we we just took a chance we took a chance uh the 
up by where we live, the Mississippi's really low. I didn't really think it was going to be a great bite. And I said, you know what? This is either going to be really smart or really dumb. So far, it's been really smart, except for we haven't put a big fish in the boat yet. But like Smitty said, it is early. You all see that lightning in the background? I think I need to turn it, turn the, turn the camera just a little bit and they'll see that lightning off to that. Let's see, I'll move the big horse trough. You can move the camera pretty well just on that thing yeah? too. Yeah? You just pivot it. Dude, we got all kinds of new technology in the old app catfish boat. Yeah, Kelly just decided to order that for me on it. Dude, that's awesome. It was all cheap, like 15 bucks, 15 bucks. Panfish love it, that's right. Thanks, P-City. You know what? I learned this from Chunky because I thought, how in the heck am I going to get my rods to stand out at night? Because we do a lot of night fishing this time of year, and I, I've always been hey, impressed with Chunky. rides up before Chunky. Yeah, that's true. That's true, <laughs> Sean was. And I actually learned this from Sean more than I did Chunky. But I got motivated to do it because we got lives. Because otherwise, uh, without the camera on and without lights on, I've got backlights that actually light the tips of the rods up. And that's what we used to do. We used to sit in basically total darkness. Uh, because in August, I'm going to tell you what, there's going to be more bugs in here. They'll be bouncing off your front teeth in here in August. I mean, I'm talking little mayflies. They'll be flying in your eyes and all that stuff. So I thought, okay, what am I going to do? So... My wife just so happened to be working on some sort of wedding thing or some sort of backdrop, and she had a few extras, so I stole them. What do we got going? Nothing? Nada. Bunch of nothing. This is smooth, but that's a down rod with it. It is. And you know, we've, we've actually finally, since the wind has let up, we've actually switched to the position that I was thinking we were going to be in. Because that one is a, it's a heavy donkey weight. Did it move over? Yeah, we did. We moved over. More like we should have been. All right, let's uh, let's crank some of these a little. That's the one that got hit. So this one or that one? That one. Yeah. I don't know what kind of bait you had on that one. Moved over quite a ways. What is that? Somebody must be having a fire. Fire. It's just carrying on that wind so loud. Oh yeah, this got a bite. Okay, so I'm gonna move this one. Try not to uh that line. Skulled, destroyed.
right, everybody. So I sit back on the wet cooler. Oh, turn that rod around, will you? Yep. There, now you can see it better. 73 wonderful people in here, 108 thumbs up and $87 in super chats and oh yeah. Thought you were making a move on a rod. Battery box for the lights. We got batteries everywhere. What do you got? Thought somebody just fed right that blue girl. It was moving. That'd be awesome. Yeah, we, we've got battery boxes everywhere. We got battery boxes for the lights up here. We got uh, back there. We've got little batteries running um, this stuff up here. Uh, earlier before we started it, but we got rained on pretty much and we, we ended up setting up on a pile of Asian carp that ended up lining us and kind of pulling us out of position right before the storm hit. So now we're set up in, in a more of a classic location without the Asian carp pile. The, there isn't a pile of Asian carp back there, but they're not in, they're not wrapped up in our lines. Back left rod, yes, it does. Big shad head. There's big shad heads, there's a drum head out, there is a, a tiny live, uh, golden red horse sucker there i mean we've got all kinds of baits out we've got some asian carp which i actually do need to put some asian carp back on we've got a couple pieces of moon eye out uh we're just gonna see what they're doing all right you want to trade me mm -hmm. smorgasbord's right i'm gonna smorgasbord my butt right up here and take a pee and, and, and believe me, if we could, if we could have got like 30 moon eye, it would be all moon eye. And we've actually gotten hit on moon eye more than anything else so far. But we only got two of them because they're tough right now. Real tough. It is beautiful out. Matter of fact, I got to take this. I'm about sweating. Late July, let's go. We might end up taking them with the old lock if this doesn't shape up. Okay, let's see. What you got? We got a sandwich? I think so. Sandwich time. What do we got? Probably. What do we got here? A little flathead? Oh, it's a. I believe we just caught a drum on a. Drum? On that little. Uh, I know it was. On that, on that little tiny sucker. Nice. So you put a small live sucker out there for flatheads, catch a big dumb drum. <laughs> that is a big dumb drum. Not the biggest I've caught here, but it is a fish. And it does make it a fishing video. <laughs> uh, no, we got plenty of fresh beat. We're not gonna cut that beat. Kelly, what's up? Right, Kelly right, Bullock. Right, check it out.
And he's not on. Are you kidding me? I thought he was dragging it left. Sure acted like he was. We may need to get closer to the main channel. I'm not, li I'm not liking the fact that we got a drum in here and we've had these, these taps that aren't really that aggressive. Like, here's one right here. And that's on the giant shad head and it just went boom, boom, like this, and then that was it. Move, move, move. We're not ready to move yet, but we're going to. Minutes, Sean. Set your watch by it. Use that drum hole, Tim. <laughs> Two stands. Hey, Stan, there are spots where I would not be afraid to use that drum hole, but this isn't one of them. Uh, right now, with the bite the way it is, and I haven't marked a absolute ton. If I marked a ton of giant fish, I wouldn't have a problem using that, that drum live. I probably wouldn't do it. If I was going to do it, I'd cut it down because the likeliness of a giant taking that whole thing, it's gonna take him some time and he's gonna pull before he gets that hook in his mouth, even if I double hook rig that. So, I mean, there's no doubt big blues eat fish of that size. So do flatheads, you know, they do. But to physically be able to contact those fish, I'm better off with a bait about this big or something like this, like a, the size of a White Castle sandwich or whatever, then I do a gigantic fish like that. Now, I, I, if, if I need to attract them and I need to eliminate small fish, that's one thing, but that is not what we're having to do right now. <laughs> White Castle making me hungry. Yeah, I wish I had a white castle right now. I'm about ready to eat one of them sandwiches there, Sean. Oh, here's yours. Here's mine. It's like dead calm out here now. The water's like glass out here. We're going to take a boat ride here in a little bit, guys. Yep. We're going to go up to an old lock. We're going to stir up some action because this, this, I mean. Oh, yeah. If I was, forgot about the Volkswagen one up at the dam when we get up there. Yeah, the Volkswagen one. Yeah, up yeah. There in Dead Man's Stan, home. yeah, he just reminded us of that one. As, as, as we get. It's, 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 his uncle's cousin's friend quit diving over. As we get physically <laughs> beaten by the, the confused seas up there. Kabang! How late? Bang. How late? Wait, we how late? Early. We gonna be on here? Pretty late. Pretty late. We're trying to pound it out. We're gonna get one. Like you said, it was a risk coming here, but you never know until you throw. But first, you gotta go. Then you know. Sean and I have done this. I've done this so many times that you you go to certain places and you do certain things and, and you uh, experiment a little bit and you get get off the beaten path just a tiny bit and you end up with success. And there's been many times when it's been tough for two, three, four hours because you're doing what has usually worked and you got to switch it over to something else. And once you do, you might be on four or five big fish or maybe you get that one super monster. Uh, the, the key is to keep your eye on the prize, keep your mind and all that stuff. Because, I mean, we could go settle for fish, 
but we're not you know because we could go right over here we go right over there we go up there for channel cats we could try for some small blues we could, we could do all this stuff we're going to keep going in these epic spots because that has it's been the one thing that has been that has paid off for giant fish over and over and over over 30 years of doing this and you know my success rate when i first started was abs absolutely terrible i used baits that were actually too big sometimes too small sometimes not not the right bait uh, i wasn't in the epic spots i wasn't in this spot on the spot so you know like even this one right here do i know that i'm perfectly anchored right now not necessarily i'm about ready to start reeling in Well, I'm gonna smoke. There you go. What do you think? You want to dam that? Are you gonna lock on me? I don't know. I, I think it would be smart. Or, yeah. I, mean, I think we could stir up some fish up there. While we still got good big baits. And we could stop and get some new shad on the way. I know. And um, we could stop behind the barges and try for some more. Yeah, that's right. I am going to, for the last five or ten minutes, I'm going to launch this thing out there. Got too much weight to fall down the dike. So I'm gonna have to change my angle a little bit. There we go. That's still not deep enough. Try to call, moon I had like maybe this. you should try to call Jason in the morning. Who? Jason. Call me. Oh, yeah. He's, he doesn't work there anymore. He's already Period? Done. Yeah. That sucks. Somebody is having a hell of a fireworks display. Yeah, I can't even see them. Look what just moved underneath the boat, dude. Manatee? Yeah, manatee. Beaver what down there at eight foot. That's what I'm saying. We got fish moving. They just don't want to bite very well. Jesus. Man, that is loud. You guys hear that? That firework display? Because the wind is so dead and yeah. it's just refracting off all this land out here. It's absolutely dead calm out here. How's our uh, forecast looking? Do we got any more rain? I guess we can't check it. I think we're all right. So does anybody know if we got any more rain coming? I can't check it on my phone. Okay, I'll take the glasses. Where are they at? There we are. The eye. The eye. All right. The professor. I guess I. I guess I do need glasses. So, um, what do you all want to talk about? Since our bite's sucking right now. Hopefully, we we get a decent bite. And Sean gets a real in uh, super monster. And really, 
we'd probably stay in an area like this if if I didn't think there was anything else we could shake this loose with. We're gonna we're gonna try one more spot. It's up close to the dam. It's a, it's actually an old lock, and there's an old crumbled lock wall, and the current comes about at about a 22 and a half degree angle and goes into about 13 to 14 right below the boat and then about 20 25 and i've done really well there on decent sized blues and flatheads believe it or not sometimes the uh not all the time sometimes i've went in there and caught 8 10 12 flatheads in an evening and some of them are up to 50 pounds doesn't happen all the time how are you light lighting your rods i'm actually lighting them with i don't know what they're called i think somebody called them fairy lights they're like some chinese thing it's they're actually wedding decorations i think and it's got a little double battery pack with a little switch on it and i basically just scotch taped them to it uh sean and his uncle do it at the canal and it's pretty darn awesome you can see them from a long way away Seventy one people in the chat, a hundred and twelve thumbs up, and we've only caught one miserable drum. Still have never fished the canal. Rhonda McDaniel, the heat, that's right. We're fixing to put some heat right on these fish. I'm getting a little bit tired of their lackadaisical ways. And now we're getting started to get infiltrated by mosquitoes. Need some, Sean? Mm -hmm. I bet. Sean's in shorts. I bet he needs them bad. Needs a bath. Pretty rough. No. Oh, not bad. All right. What do, we, what do we got here? What do we got? Question: How do you start breaking down, picking the right epic spots without getting overwhelmed and all the choices? You know what? Two stands. That is. Uh, that is something that is. That is a definite situation. Especially when you've got a super diverse fishing scenario like you do the Mississippi you have to you, it takes kind of a, a little bit of a lifetime or listening to the right people and and a little bit of both of fishing places that weren't good and fishing places time after time that were good so I've basically been able to fish these areas long enough to form a milk run and once you've formed a milk run and you understand the spots you can go to other pools that you've never been to other rivers and at least be close now i've talked to people that fish the tennessee river and they tell me that flatheads hang fairly deep uh, on the tennessee and i believe that because i've seen them catch them in 40 45 50 55 60 foot of water but that really doesn't happen on the mississippi you can go to you know a lot of the spots that are really deep on the mississippi especially the upper stretch are way too fast for flatheads. What could cause the bite to be slow everywhere? Kelly, that is one thing that I am trying to work on because you can tell that the bite has been slow for probably two, two and a half weeks everywhere, everywhere. That's a whiteboard question. You're right, it is, it is. Um, and I didn't bring the whiteboard, of course, uh, but I'll get back to the whiteboard again. Now, one thing that some of these epic spots stand is when nothing else, is, especially when the water's low and nothing else is going, sometimes you just got to put your time in. But that's not really the, uh, the situation that we're on right now because we, we didn't get here early. We didn't 
there's a, a bunch of other spots we didn't really have time to fish. We looked at them and it looked like there was good fish there. The problem is when, when the water's low, the Asian carp come off the banks and then they start to hang deep. And then you're marking 30, 40 pound fish uh, that are Asian carp instead of blues or flatheads in their obvious location. Now we've marked a lot of flatheads and I know they're flatheads because they're just off the bottom and I've, I've been here long enough and it's got the yellow, it's got the red and it's just an obvious bump. And, uh, uh, but have we contacted them? We're, we're not throwing a lot of live baits. Uh, and we may should be throwing a lot of live baits. We're throwing a lot of cut baits and you know, uh, I've caught lots of flatheads on cut baits, but it hasn't really been working all that well. Uh-oh, I just did something. Ah, oh, geez. What'd I do? I think I switched the camera view. Yep, there we go. We were looking out the front for a little bit. So, okay, we can hear you. Good. Man, I look old in this light. I guess that's because I am old. Yeah, I did flip it, Mr. Gadget. Yeah, I'm pretty much a phone retard. Oh, man. What'd you get? Nah, I'm just saying, you just said retard. Oh, I did. I that's, that's, that's like, it's like bad. <laughs> he does get triggered on that. Flathead Bite was on fire today down here in Baton Rouge. Gosh, dang it. Yep. Okay, we have talked about that, Kelly. YouTube, it's awesome because you can notice trends across the country. That's right. Flatted by was on fire today down here in Baton Rouge and got great blues too. Well, that's awesome. And I am sometimes envious of that other end of the Mississippi River because it seems that it's not as uh, finicky down there as it, as it is up here. And I'm sure it could be finicky like any, anywhere else, but this upper stretch is really pretty finicky. Slow because people like to keep fishing the same spots and fish move from their favorite spots this time of year to spawn. Well, actually we are past the spawn, uh, Jeremy. Um, can't fish the same spots all the time. And, and actually I have not fished this spot for a year. Uh, this isn't uh, something that uh, I've fished a bunch besides this in years past yeah i haven't fished this spot in probably this particular spot in probably six years uh fishing will be slow if there is no fish in the area you are fishing right and you're you're exactly right we are marking fish in active location um you know we are presenting decent baits uh we've we've got a very few moon eye and we're fixing to go get some more moon eye because it's a lot easier at night um so we reel these fuckers in about 15 minutes yeah at maybe even 10. All right. because i i just don't i don't we gotta i mean go we, we, we got to go hit behind them barges yeah and get a moon eye. yeah then we got to stop and get some shad and then yep. we're gonna go to the dance that's right that that's right did you guys hear sean sean's getting the program down you know and i love seeing that too because when i first took him he's like what are we gonna do <laughs> you know he's like uh, i don't know because you know he, he hadn't been on the mississippi river and it, it was it was an absolute it's an absolute joy to see him now, yeah everything you it, it's it's it is my pleasure to see him progress as far as knowledge and know what to do and all this stuff actually the first time i took sean flathead fishing uh it was maybe 10 minutes before he had a 30 in the boat i mean we basically launched we went to one of my great spots throughout where flatheads are usually located and bam so he had like a 30 in the boat and he, he was completely amazed because he spends a lot of time targeting flatheads uh you know that have to move to him and we were putting the bait in their face in 20 minutes about 15 minutes ago that's right and you see sean getting up right now he's ready to uh yeah so yeah and you know stan and that's what you have to have you're not always right you know, there's some times when I go out and somebody that's pretty new actually whoops up on him because they moved into the right spot. And I may have stayed with my spots that I felt confidence in and it just didn't work. That's fishing. So, you know, you, you do have to have the confidence to win and you got to have the confidence to lose. 
And I got confidence for both. And so does Sean. That is right. But remember, if you fish there, so do others, and it gets fished out. And it can. And and we 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 know oh, this. We, we know that. this, uh, Rhonda. The uh, commercial fishing, and we didn't know this until we got here. And there is a lot of hoop nets in this pool, and uh, that can be pretty There's damaging. On this stretch. Yeah, this stretch is getting pretty. It's pretty rough with commercial hoop nets. And whenever you fish a pool that has commercial hoop nets, uh, the fishing can be tough. There's no doubt about it. But you know, I've heard locals talk about how rough the bite is. I've heard locals talk about, well, there's nothing going on and blah, 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 and then move into a situation and whoop up on the fish. And then you whip your camera out and they go, oh my gosh, we've been fishing all week and we haven't even come close to that. And it's, it's not because I'm necessarily any better than anybody else. It's just maybe I moved on to the right spot at the right time. So, you know, conventional wisdom, doesn't always uh, play into what you're doing at the time. You know, uh, we went to Alton in 2007 and it was actually my top 10 anchor. And uh, I got a friend that follows all the Alton boards. He knows a lot of people that fish down there and we whooped up on fish, so, huge fish. Nobody had done that all year. And we just evidently got there at the right time, at the right place with the right bait. And I mean, I'm telling you, we put, we put two, 100 plus pounders in the boat on one anchor also a 70 and i think one and, and i got to go back and look again i say that all the time because it's been it's been a while and i'm uh oh uh oh we got a fish going come on load up baby come on be happy oh boy and uh you know it, it, nobody nobody was doing any good in that pool and conventional wisdom was you know the pool is terrible everybody fished south of st louis and uh, we just happened to get on at the right time, and it was one of the most amazing anchors I've ever been a part of. And so, you know, a guy's got to go, a guy's got to have some confidence, a guy's got to try some things. And, and that, that is all part of being able to catch big fish, is that sometimes you just got to believe in yourself. And, you know, I've sat on spots like this that were pretty much terrible uh, for three, four, five hours, and we put 170 in the boat at 3.30 in the morning. You know, and I'm not willing to do that on a live, but we would probably, if I wasn't doing a live, if Sean and I weren't doing it, we'd, we'd probably A, move more, B, possibly sit on some spots a, a little bit even longer than we are. I, do, I understand if you're doing something like this where you're doing a little bit of teaching, a little bit of entertainment and stuff like that, people want to see fish. And so, you know, I look at it almost like I'm guiding you guys out and say, okay, if you guys are all monster hunters, fine, we're gonna sit here. But I know that not everybody is. So These we're gonna go after some action. What's that? We got cross lines? These two white rods are doing exact same thing. Okay, all right. Yeah, there's a fish on the Or, or there's a, uh, let me see the, uh, could be a stick on it. They're Oh, 
on here? Yeah. Okay, so we had two rods bobbing at the same time. One was going way left. So Sean's got a fish on here. We don't know how big it is, but I did feel it, and I think he's into this one now. What a mess. You fighty beast. Bitey. There's old Bitey. A little Chanel cat. A little Chanel cat. I don't know. Probably four, four pounds. Five, maybe. Six. Six? Six pounds. Let's let him go. Beautiful. All right, I think we're gonna go on a little, uh, little bait run. We are. We're gonna get this stuff wrapped up here. We're gonna go on a little bait run and we're gonna go see if we can't get on a big one. everybody y'all ready to go on a bait run we're gonna see if sean can run this camera and i'll throw and do all the stuff and whatever I guess Sean's gonna get the anchor. Run the boat. Get up. Shad thing up here. Get rid of them real quick. Yet? No. Here's the Probably aren't above it. No. 
down. Grappling hook. I think I think an anchor of pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you hold that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Get the blood pumping. barges right there that he's at. Oh really? Yeah. Oh jeez. One thing well, you can probably do is the outside one. Remember the outside yeah, edge one? I'm not, I'm not messing with that at night because they'll start moving. The outside edge one with the blue light? Yeah. That corner, that's about all you got. We fed that, we go go run and get some shad and that's about it. Right. And we gotta we gotta put some Asian carp down in the next spot too. Yeah I'm sure that that's not a Hot item. So 
So of course our moon eye spot is occupied by a big barge. A big tug. Yeah, that outside corner was about the only one you got. And then you got that set of pilings right uh, yeah. right, 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 right. If you go up that barge, right there, I think there's a loaded one there and there next to that one. I don't know, it's hard to see it with that like shiny in my face. Right. Yeah. I can't I can't do anything there. Nope. Nope. I don't think Oh they must have moved it. I, I think they did. That's, yep. that's moved. How dare they move these We're barges? Done. Yeah. We got the set of pilings up here where we got those uh, skip jackets for. What'd you see? Okay, so it looks like we go to the boat ramp and try for the big shad. Big shad. It's big shad time. There's your red buoy over there. stuff we got. <laughs> yeah, with you. Yeah. Turn your 
light back on so you can see what's going on. How about that flashing dumb thing? All right, folks, so this is a big mud flat with some lights, and it's traditionally a pretty good chat spot. I don't know if it will be tonight, but it usually is. We're kind of a little bit too shallow. Well, how many feet we got? Six. Okay, we're all right. Oh, they're dimpling all around us. That's one throw. We're done. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> so, oh, that's going to be the best. Start back to the south, Sean, or I will. Shad buried everywhere. Oh. We went like way too far into it. Okay. Alright. We ready to do some running? Yeah. Uh, not yet. We gotta we gotta straighten some stuff around. Okay. Right, right in this rope one back here. Here, you can hand it to me. I'll put it away. It's all right. I just put it up front here, and I'll put this right over here. <coughs> yeah, there's a lot of shad there. Well, I think we waited a little bit. Bait and run, that's right. Now we're gonna run. Okay, so. That was nice. I saw right before he threw it, I saw them all just trying to jet. They were all just trying to scramble out of there. That's a shit ton. It's good. Good size too. Right. You got the light. Yes, sir. There you go. Alright, so what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at this main channel before we go clear up there. There's the channel lid, there's the green there. Green there. So what we're doing right now is since the water's low, we are taking a look at the main channel drop. And the main channel drop can hold a bunch of active fish when the water's low here. I've done it in the past pretty much every time. So we'll see. Okay, so here's the main channel drop. Let me hold them up here so they can see that. Can you, do you want to see uh, the show? That's all right, it's not that much of a drop. It's not really no, all that. No, it's not. Fantastic. 
but I'm not really marking a whole bunch of fish on it. But I'd say run it up that run up that there's that green up there. got to try to mark fish in here and, de and decide where we are going to anchor. Alright, keep that way up high. That's right. Like way up high. There we go. Okay, show me that wall. Yep. Water outlet. Huh? Water outlet. Yeah. Pretty cool in the camera that you have got plants.
definitely going to need hearing. top of it folks and we're gonna go off the back seven six seven five seven eight real bumpy we're still bouncing the anchor are we still bouncing the anchor yeah if I, if I put pressure on it okay it's still, it's still All right, you'll, you'll catch on it there we go. we're about ready to yep go ahead and tie her off I think Might should have been up a little bit, but I think we're going to be all right. You like to pull it up? No, I think we're we're good. We're good. Yeah, it's pretty. I sat here with you. Oh yeah, we're sitting kind of on top of it. There's not enough current to shove us over. Well, maybe if I come back, eh? Mm, yeah, maybe. Probably not. Really difficult to uh, triangulate this at night. I think I think the transducers are on top of it at six. Go ahead and you come back here, and I'll feed out some rope, and then try to get this correct right here. Yeah, it says six. Yeah, because we should be tilted more to the right. Six but three, six four. This this current's just kind of coming with it. We may have to get a little bit farther into it. I'm fine with that because I think we need to get to closer to that deeper water if it'll shove us over a little bit. It might just keep feeding us down the old wall too. Eight feet. Okay, that's better. Eight, seven, eight, nine, nine. Yep, yep. that's what we needed to do. Okay. Now yep. we're kind of tit, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Set up your camera. Yep. Turn the light on, and we're going to use those new, all new baits. Yep. Let's throw those suckers out and let's see what happens. Suckers, we're ready to do some fishing. Your, your, uh, your glasses I got are right em. up there, okay. 70 people still in here. Awesome. What? What's up? Right Did you guys have a good ride? Did you enjoy the bait catching? Okay. We got, we got, we got baits. We got baits. Got some, uh, got some shad bait. scissors. Shad scissors. Shad scissors. Jeez, we got like 10 Where the scissors at? There. I don't know. We need a light on the subject. We need a light on this subject. Where's the phone? Right I don't know. Just had it. You were stepping on it. Oh, it's up here. Shad scissors. Epic, the expert, is going to deploy the base in his pinpoint spots. I'm going to pour me a new drink and get him one if he needs one. I could use a sandwich after I'm about to fall over. Then get you a damn sandwich part with a damn scissors. 
So much nicer though. But hey, let's do it. Right there. Oh man. Caught some fades. We can do it right here on this thing. Yeah. Heads? Yep, heads, bodies, feet and tails. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Oh yeah. Fresh, we said, fresh. He goes right in his eye. Right in his eye. All right, so we got the dropper right below the boat, and I will explain the situation in just a second. That may not be really deep enough, but we're going to try it. Okay, but that's just, that's kind of inconsequential. So let's take uh, that other dropper rig and let's uh, switch that, but let's get this one out right now. Yep, this is a good long distance one. Go ahead. All right, Sean just got us a nice, bloody looking head. That looks delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna put this right down the pipe. Yeah, here's the scissors.
That's good. There's a sandwich, man. Okay. I'm going to throw some live baits at some point. Grass carp's in the land. Yeah, it is. Oh. Let me just pour them in there. Yep. Oh, I can't believe it all fit. Mm hmm. This is really going to make our ice yummy, isn't it? Hell yeah. You better, uh, where are you putting it? freshen up or anything while you're in there for as far as a drink? look up here see what these crazy people are doing up here all right let me turn this thing down a little bit a little bright all right there we go 78 people in here 121 thumbs up who's all in here doing what Tony Harrison mr. gadget Tim Molina Robert James Misadventures in Bruce Beaver. All right, what's up, buddy? Mike J. Surratt, real gals fish. MK bait and run. Yes, right, we did that. Bunch of bait, we got her. She's on chill now in our drink cooler. We're getting our ice good and Slimed up in there. Mud Tramp, Becca, what's up? Sir Finn's catfishing, George Ray. Wild Turkey. LG Bass is in here. Fins and Fines. We are fishing an old blown up lock. And they built a brand new one right there. So we're kind of fishing off the back edge of it where it drops. We expect to get hit by channel cats, but this also can be a flathead zone and a blue cat zone. Oh lord, that grape's pretty good too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Chanel cat. Back tappy. Tony Harrison. Eighty one people. 124 thumbs up. Where are the blue cats on this level? We are trying to find them. Well, you got guys say it's a 20 mile pool. Yeah, it's actually. And it's been right. getting hammered by the uh, commercial fishermen. Mm -hmm. We're giving it a try. It's all right, though. That's right. 
Because we got friends, 80 of them in here, bud. Look at that. 80, oh 79, goodness. whatever. That's awesome. Right around 78. there. Now, when I'm at home on the chat, a lot of times I'll see something like 42, and everybody will be reporting like 82. Mm. Uh, and then I have to refresh it, and then finally. Mm -hmm. George Ray says, epic. Hi, buddy. What's up, George Ray? You're awesome. One of the hardest working moderators there is. Really? Hell yeah, George Ray? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He puts up links like my, a machine gun. Yeah, I have seen him. Yes, he's thrown up my link. Oh, right here? No, nope, on the right. Not all the way. Second, yep. Corner. It was a bite. It appears as though not only are we on a highly pressured pool, but the bite is not that great. But that's all right. It can turn around. You can get that one good lucky fish. Now that rod all the way over there is not even in the water because right underneath the boat right here, we're at a high peak of about six foot of water and then it goes into 24, 25 foot of water. And this is actually a transition. Yeah, that's a, that's a bite. That's definitely a bite. It looks like flat. Now I know. Yep. All right, everybody. Yeah, it's Tim Molina, Sir Finn's, George Ray, LG Bass. You guys are great. Great. Lights on top. Here. All right, we turned off the one that wasn't in. Hey there. Oh, that's Mr. Tim Timolina. Shoved to the left. Is that a beaver? Oh. All right, everybody. Sorry, just pay attention to the rods. What's up, Mr. Chavez and Becca? I don't know what happened to Peace City. Maybe he got tired of not seeing us catch fish. Sean thinks that uh, Peace City might have got too heavy into the, uh, the stuff and maybe passed out. Cervezas. Cerveza. Oh, man. Ah. 
Kind of. Usually this is a pretty happening spot. Matter of fact, it is 10 after 11. Usually this is a... What do you think we call this thing at midnight? Yeah, we might have to. We might have to call it midnight because when, when this spot's dead, it's pretty rough. The bite is. But I am going to tell you one thing. We're going to pull a rod or two and we're going to throw out some live baits because this could be basically a flathead area. I've seen it like that where there's no blues or channel cats. It's almost all flatheads in here. That's by you on the right though. First bite, finally, on the down rod. Come on. Yeah, they're getting ready to blow out some water here in a minute. Yeah. The barge up there in the water. Oh, jeez. Okay, so let's, um, let's throw out a live bait. That thing's still getting in. All right, so we're going to see if there's any flatheads in this old lock that they destroyed, I don't know how many years ago. Okay, so move that one over here. Yeah, All right, I'm back. Got moths on the screen. 82 people still in there. What? Wow. Stephen Corley, TX Tiger, George Ray, Tom Harris, Papa T. Yeah. I mean, to look up the city of Key Cut to see if we're going to get shit on. What's this? Oh, that was a fish, probably. Except for we are getting kind of thrown to the right now. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. <clears throat> well, that sucked. Orientation is locked. All right. We said a boat just collapse our whole unit. I have no idea where that battery went. Yep. 
There, it's still there. All right, we got to plug the old. Did you get a fish? Oh, it's going on. Yeah, it's down. I think I'm in the line. I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes we get pushed forward. Sometimes we get whatever. But sometimes that'll be fish. All right, let me get out of the way of the action here. Got another line. All right, so they're they're blowing the water sideways out of the new lock, and sometimes it kind of disorients. It kind of throws the current off, and we start dragging around, and all kinds of stuff happens. Except for sometimes we also catch fish, and that's not the case here. I need to throw this up. Yeah, spots like this can be difficult to fish, but they can also be a good payoff if we have a decent bite and there's fish moving around. And so that's one of the reasons why we decided to fish here and we talked about it is that if you, one of the, one of the things about this, if you can't catch fish here, you usually have a, kind of a really bad bite. This is like one of those test areas. We might be getting hit by another storm. Um, stuff like that so we'll know whether to call it if we can't catch a fish here usually this is a pretty active spot yep which rod is that the power line no no it's right here. oh i put it back row we got it Yep. I hope Mexicat didn't see that. <laughs> if Mexicat saw that. Mm. This one got pulled in when it fucking Yep. So we're actually shifting more to the right here. Did you want this or this? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you can see them. Yeah, all of them. Shifting to the right. That's crazy. How that oh does yeah. That. If you're down farther, it'll turn the whole boat all the way left, and you'll be snagged on everything. That's one of the reasons why we come and clear up here. Don't feel like you're moving. Nope, it doesn't. Especially at night, but during the day you can really see it. There's many times we've stopped at this spot just to check out how the bite was. And I was thinking I wanted to stop here earlier, but we didn't have enough time. And it's you know multiple rods down, uh, you know, 25 pound blue, 25 pound blue, 30 pound blue, uh, channel cat, flathead, you know, crazy stuff like that. Uh, but right now it's not showing as much that's a bite that's a bite yep that might be a flathead too this here yeah it is a bite oh yeah big fish crunch let's go we'll go power line Ooh. oh yeah That's what we call the barge bite because when the barge goes through, you get that flux of water coming in. It stirs a lot of things up, shifts fish's location, which tells me we're going to have to duck inside this thing. And hopefully we can fish along that wall. Doesn't always work.
No cerveza either, but I'm feeling like renewing my relationship with Jim Beam, Tim Molina says. Let me go up here and see if I missed anything. Stephen Corley, back uh, in a couple hours. Epic Speaks, I listen. That's Tom Harris. All right, so let's do a little bit of whiteboard. The, the bites aren't, aren't doing too good. Let's have some questions about what you're most interested in as far as, get him? Nope. Swing and a miss. Got me wanting. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, it is tough being good. What do you got for bait on that? Beautiful. Piece of oh yeah, it. yep. Get him out there. Don't cast too far left because it'll be right on top of that dike. There you go. Perfect. All right. We got a bite. Come on! Came all the way back here and then spin it. It's really weird. Hey, I never knew that thing. I know it. Oh, you mean as far as the weather? Yeah. I don't want to get pounded here. You don't need to get shit on. Sometimes you don't. That thing snagged up bigger than Dallas. We're not going any more far as the left. I am pulling the front though. We'll leave that thing snagged up. Yeah, they're hammering the hell out of it. Hammering the hell out of it, ain't they? Yeah. All right. I'm going to try to... Let me see the eye real quick. You got the eye on your head? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go... Uh... I don't have my phone, but uh, you guys, anybody in here, can you look at a weather radar for Keokuk? We're like right at Keokuk to see if that storm is going to hit us. If, if it's going to hit us, we'll get out of here because we've already got crapped on once. And it's too late to get crapped on again. If anybody can do that, Keokuk, Iowa, to see if the storm's coming to hit us. I mean, we could back out of this and probably look at ours. We're right, 
right key cook. It's looking like it's coming back our way. Yeah, it does kind of look that way. If it is, we're out. It does look south of us, but I don't know, it looks like it's getting bigger. <laughs> if anybody could do that, that'd be appreciated. Because if not, if it gets any bigger than that, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be calling it here shortly. Bruce is tracking south of me. We look like we're okay then, bud. Thanks, man. Chiller bait. Bait tank says it's moving away from us. Okay, because we're right. Yeah, we're right here at Kia Cook. Cool. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see. You can see it. Good. It's going south, Miss Adventures. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That's awesome. <laughs> but maybe that was a bug. Yeah, dude, I'm juiced up enough to drive home tonight with the old uh, bangs. Okay. 75 people, 126 thumbs up. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for sticking with us, guys. Thanks for the weather report, too. Much yeah. appreciated. No. It's these rough days that are uh, interesting. I mean, I'd rather that the day, you know, be active and the fish pounding and the water levels right. And we didn't Even have the pro commercial. struggle. Yeah, they do. They do. Jesus Christ. Yeah, the secret. I want to have a secret to hooking those fish that come towards you like flatheads. Keep grinding. That's right, Kevin. The grind is real. Especially when you get poured on like we did earlier. That's fine. And then we just got a good weather report because this lightning the south of us was going to drive us out of here. Which the bite is going to drive us out of here pretty soon too. Seventy-nine people in here. One hundred twenty-nine thumbs up. That's good. That's awesome. That is awesome. For a drum and a channel cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to take you guys. These guys are gonna go with us down to Alton, aren't they? Oh yeah. <laughs> We're gonna go fish that big dam. The epic spots down there. Oh yeah. At the right times. I think Alton actually has water down there. Not very much. Really? No. It's not really very flooded. It doesn't really get flooded. Well, the Illinois is dumping into it. Yeah. And so it's pretty decent, but the Illinois is about done being uh, Right. Flooded. Better than this, probably. Yeah, oh yeah. I was live for seven hours, caught six dinks under one pound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By gosh, you're out fishing, having fun doing it. I told him, I said, just coming here and seeing the beauty. This place is amazing. Dead man's hole up here, this big, huge dam. And they're not running any of these gates out here. The water's so low. So the current, all that, the place has been getting pounded by commercial fishermen from what we hear. And it's a little early yet. We came and we, we scouted a lot of good areas and uh, yeah. And we decided I've, to take you guys with us. I've enjoyed myself. Oh, yeah. I always do. After I go on adventures with him, then I go home. Like, the next couple days, I kind of have withdrawal, like, adventure withdrawal. 
Because <laughs> I'm back to my normal life I again. I too. I had bad with Because you know, when him and I go on these adventures and we get all tuned in and we go, you know, a couple days at a time, it's you're in a mindset. And then when you go back, you go back to the civilian life. It's like, <laughs> I call it the civilian life, but yeah, back to the same old. You're like, oh man, I'd rather sit out here and not catch anything <laughs> than do my normal routine at home. Well, and, and we took a chance. Usually uh, when, when the water level reaches, you know, six or less, it's usually pretty much the kiss of death, but it had been low for so long. And usually it fluctuates from about 13, 14, 12, 10, 9 feet all the way down to like 6, 7. And that'll, Thanks, Mark. And that, that will Mark be Knott's the out kiss of here. Of death. Okay, see you, Mark. Uh, it'll usually be the kiss of death, but, uh, you know, if you can get a, a stable low and a stable weather pattern uh, with hot weather during the day, sometimes that'll, that'll creep up the bite. But evidently, uh, according to the locals, the blues haven't even really been able to make it up this far. Yeah. And this is the furthest north point you can expect to catch an actual blue. Now, sometimes the flatheads are on crazy, but we all know about flatheads. They can be on, they can be off. It just just depends. But it is only a couple hours, two and a half hours from home. We were going to go fishing. So For us, that's kind of close. Yeah. Him and I just sit and talk the whole time fishing and whatever and laugh, and it makes the trip great. And this is not a bad drive over here from where we're at. You just gotta go. You never know until you throw. Beat sitting at home on the couch, that's for sure. Maybe Tim can do a little fire walking later. Misadventures in catfishing. Wabash Nate says, yeah, storms kept him home tonight. But went out last night, caught baby channels. That two stand couldn't beat. Yep, storms are from Canton to the south. Whiskers and stripes sinks. Hell, I think I'm fresh enough that if we wrap this here pretty soon, we're gonna go back and we'll probably just go ahead and drive home tonight and gear up for our next adventure. I'm telling you, this, this low water has plugged us all year on the Mississippi for as far as everything. We did contact some nice flatheads. Some, we, we, we got a couple of monsters this year, but nothing epic, epic. But uh, well, yeah, water levels are a, a, a deal. And we're, everybody across the country's had had iffy stuff going on too. Oh, are you kidding me, dude? These things are biting so pathetic. Yeah. So I launched two fresh baits down at the trench, and you and the trench is basically it's a trench cut across the bottom where they blow the water out and. Blues and flatheads will sit in that trench. They'll get blown out when the thing, and they'll hang around that trench. And I put two baits basically right on that trench, and they're, I mean, we're getting action, but they just won't, it's like, they're full. <clears throat> Where he's talking about it blowing out, that's that's the lock right there, the new lock. We're fishing the old demo, demolished part, and that's the newer lock over there, and that's, that drain holes when they, when they dump the water out of the lock, when they bring them down to this level. Which usually fires up fish, they, they usually hang around that. So, in July before, during, not, it wasn't water this low. It probably, oh, right now it's running, I think, uh, five or six, something like that. I didn't even check it, but something like five or six. And I, I took a sports rider here, and we basically showed up at dark with live bluegills. Went to this spot, caught a 38 and a 42, and he says to me, he says, you think we'll do any better? I said, well, we could. He goes, yeah, but all, all I need for my story is a couple of good fish. And I said, are you kidding? We got to keep fishing. So I kind of held him hostage for a few hours. And uh, we ended up catching one more fish of about 25 pounds in the same spot. We're just down a little bit. 
and uh, we may, we may we may actually move. But I mean, that's that's how this spot can be. Uh, him and my oldest son and I, or was it was it Connor? Was it Garrett or Connor? We came up here and just blasted two 25s like like right as yeah. soon as we threw it. And uh, this is a pretty cool spot to catch even 25s because you know the current is is and look at that just happy. We got this one. Shut down. It might. It might be. Thing. I don't know. Yep, you know, it's amazing how if you get a snag, this 50 pound test is incredible, but yet if you get it on a rock or you get it with a big fish, something in between you, like a flathead and a big log or whatever, they'll snap it like sewing thread. It's, it's kind of crazy. But yet you can pull it as hard as you want sometimes. Something that's giving moving. Yeah, it's moving. Oh, God. Wish that was a fish right now. All right, hold the rod. And thumb the spool. All right, guys, we're gonna make one more move just in hopes we can catch a decent fish. Um, we're gonna move along the wall and hope that down this direction, as the current increases, we can actually get on something that will bite. So, excuse me. Oh. I think this current, you can pull it. If you want me to run the, anchor, uh, the motor, I will. It's pretty easy though, isn't it? Yeah, that's that clip that I have attached there. Um, 
so that the rest of that anchor doesn't go out. Oh, I know. I've got a lot of phones in the Mississippi River. Wouldn't be the first one. Okay. Did, did we snap it? Okay. I gotta pay attention to this movie. It's gonna die and then it'll be hard to start. Broke a zip tie. Alright, just stay up there and get ready. It doesn't seem like it. It seems like it's coming right for us. Oh, there's a barge right in the lock right now. Water outlet's right there, and I don't see us being able to anchor up any farther than that. We can go down. Matter of fact, let us let us go down a little bit. There's some big ass fish right there. I mean, big. One, two, three. Right, I mean, right before the little trench. Thirteen. There's a big tree. There isn't any way. Wow. Kind of dead here. I know. Dude, you ought to see the freaking monster fish on the market. Nothing new about that, though. We marked a lot of monster fish today, and none of them in pike.
Anytime you can hold it. Nope. Got it? Nope. Okay. All right, folks, we're in an area I usually do not anchor because usually, there's usually too much current to even anchor here very well. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically bait up and throw out. See you. Sixty-seven people still in here. It says Come on, people, we need a feast. All right, I'm gonna slap this one right alongside that wall. Downtown. Downtown. One eighty two Q K F T W. Yep, storms tracking about twenty miles south, east southeast. Clear, you're west for now. All right, nice. This is gonna be probably our last anchor. We're gonna see if we can pop one. If not, we're gonna get on the road. Seventy people still here. Chip Molina says he misses the smell of a two, two, two stroke motor. Yeah. I love the smell of it. And shad pants, don't forget shad pants. Shad pants and two stroke motors. I got shad pants going.
Any live baits out? No. No. I should have put some out, but. Um, there's not really a. There's not really a top of, you know, a bottom contour that relates itself well to flatheads right here. This is basically a moving area that relates itself better to blues and flatheads. I'm sorry, blues and channel cats, but up there where we were is mostly the flathead zone in this travel zone because they can tuck up tight to the old wall and there's a current break all along this and it's like a big giant rubble pile that runs with the current basically and they they usually hang right on the back side of that and up in this where there's a little bit less current two center rods are getting ash on that one of these days we're going to do a live and this is going to be a whole different story it's going to be rod crushing like this especially right in here I can get to that that wall over here on the west left. Get a nice live bait out. Maybe we'll shake something loose. That's the damn corner of death right there. Is that thing not running? It's not running. Oh, I'll, I'll bet you, uh, you just got to open that and uh, the thing's running, but the, the, the hose is off. How many fish? Sure. Yeah, they've been bouncing a lot tonight. What's that? Did the one left in the motor bounce?
What time is it? Time to wrap it. I don't believe there's any monsters up here doing anything. They're not, I mean, they might be here, but they're not. I think there's monsters here. I don't think they're fighting. I don't think there's two anyway. A lot of the same. No. Oh, you're kidding me. Cheeky weed, dude. Oh.
things are. Uh, uh -oh. These things are uh, candidates for ugly sticks, three odds, and small change. But not to say a big one would cruise right through here and smoke it. I mean, it's just happened. on the live thing, dude. But there's no answer to that. What's everybody got to say? Here, check them out. Getting tired. Talking about food, no. Fuck Talking it. about food? Yeah, that's what happens when nobody's catching any fish. Hey. What's up, Sean? Hey, right behind you, that was fine. Just the same, though. Yeah, You're not a down rod. That's actually a tug. That wasn't even just a snap. They just won't keep up with it. Get one. Nope. Nope. Well, we're looking for a channel back here. Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty sad when you can't even catch the channel jack. Just have to Yeah, just chewing the crap out of it. What do you think? Let's call it. Yeah, that's not, this is, these are not the fish we're looking for, that's for sure. Matter of fact, we can't even get these fish to pull a rod down. Can't keep them to, can't get them to put it in their mouth. I'd say, uh, I'd say the bite's pretty non-existent. Yeah, yeah, we did. We gave, we gave them a good, good effort, a good shot at it. We'll throw that in the sinker pile.
Well, it looks like when we go to the Mississippi, we're either gonna stick around home or we're gonna go even farther south than this. We're gonna get to the bigger, deeper water next time we do a live. So we uh, pretty much done tested this and it's uh, not a very good bite. All right, everybody. Still got 62 great people in chat. Let me get my glasses on. All right, so we are gonna call it. The bite's pretty terrible. Uh, the uh, I got a whole bunch of excuses, but basically we're just getting a bunch of basically pecker taps. Um, even in a travel zone like this, uh, with a little bit of increased current uh, down there, and I'm kind of just recapping. We went to a couple epic spots. Hey, Mark Knot. Uh, I thought he was going to bed. Yeah, I thought Mark Knot was going to bed too. So we, uh, we marked some big fish and there's no doubt in my mind that they were catfish we couldn't get them to go we also set up on a big pot of asian carp that aren't normally out there that far or in that deep of water because we were getting lined and you know that was our first anchor then we set up on the other one and we caught like one stinking drum and maybe a channel cat or something like that and uh some of the other spots there just wasn't really enough current with the wind coming up even with a drift sock to hold in place Mr. Duggar hey you're 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 welcome thanks for going with us because uh you know sometimes uh it's not so epic when you go out they made it fun for us though. they thanks. did make I it fun yeah that came in here yeah and you know thanks for the super chats if they, uh, Thanks for all the thumbs up. They can ride back to the boat ramp. And yeah, that yeah, we could uh, leave it on so you guys can keep talking. But we are going to call it. We're two and a half hours away from home, and uh, that puts us home about 
3.30. So, all right, let's hope we can get this anchor back. Do you wanna pull them down? Yeah, I will, but we'll get the anchor back first.
Look at all the shad jumping. You guys can see that or not. Spill one more drink on the way. I think I spilled more than I drank. Look at that, 44 people still in here. That's cool. Now, conventional thought, people would think, okay, go where the bait fish are. Well, on rivers like this, it's a little bit different than lakes. You may have an occasional fish that forays up into there, but most of the time when you're in that dead zone, slack current like that, you don't really get too many big fish going up there. You might get some smaller channel cats going in there. No skunk, they got a, yeah, we got a couple fish. Wasn't great, but I suppose every day on the water, every day that you're alive is a great day. Muddy River catfish, watch out for catfish, yeah? Well. We're about ready to get into our season. We are at the farthest north point on the Mississippi that you could expect to catch a blue. And it's a fickle thing because blues are highly migratory. And they have a certain sequence in which they travel north. And we really, supposedly, yes, that's right, misadventures. Every day above ground is a great day. But uh, let's just say that, wow, these glasses are really rough. Uh, blue cats migrate on their own pattern and one of these days I will really really explain as much as I know about the blue cat migration upstream and when it happens how it happens and why it happens I was just hoping that the combination of stable water and all that had done it but I'm still early and I do that occasionally because I like to test the waters and I have wishful thinking going on I think, oh, okay, you know, yeah, so we're third week in July, and maybe we've got some blues up here, but, and, and we probably do, but we sure couldn't get them to bite. Yep. Which is amazing. There wasn't a shad one in here earlier today light when the sun was out but they sure stack up at this boat ramp pretty thick once the sun goes down now I'm gonna grab a hold of this thing I certainly wouldn't want Sean's deal so I gotta power this thing up here fall back a little bit Sean coming all right oh all right go out a little a little more all right
Yep. None of these ramps are made for low water. Yes, sir. All right, so we're going to uh, tidy up the boat, get it ready for transport real quick. fell over a little bit. I think it works better than it did before. <laughs> Yeah, we still got 42 people in here, dude. Or 40. working again? Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it just Something came off, didn't it? Okay. I'm going to get my phone. Oh, crap. Yeah, it's, uh, you like this thing? I like that thing. That thing's awesome. 
So, um, all right, everybody. Uh-oh, left some lights on. I think we are ready to travel. Now if I just jump out of the boat and not kill myself. Yeah, that was a little rough. So there's there's Sean's new little stand there. You guys can see it. It was cheap. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty nice though. Perks. You know what I didn't do? Hold up. I did not make myself a drink. So I get pretty thirsty in that truck. I don't know how long this thing will keep going, but we'll go down the road a little bit. got going here mr. gadget you're welcome thanks for coming along with us now you guys are dash cam So I wonder how many people are actually sleeping. There's still 36. Tap, is anybody else chatting? Yeah. When was the last chat? 1128? Or 1228? Yeah. 1231? Yeah. Well, they're still here. Who's that? Are we, yeah, well, you guys can ride in the truck with us. Time for a ride, sure. 
we'll uh we'll try to think up well not think up just talk about some fishing stories and stuff that's happened and things like that i guess whiskers and stripes is still fishing changing out baits nice where are you fishing at whiskers and stripes everything's secure in the boat yep i know we are ready to fly yeah still listening is that hagen grubs hagen grubs fishing is still listening <laughs> oh so okay so hagen how is the bite where you're fishing or have you been able to uh fish much i know I, I watched I, yeah time. i watched his last video um taylorsville lake never have much luck here you know I've, I've heard about taylorsville and there's a lot of people wanting to figure out a combination that they can actually consistently catch fish at taylorsville so if if you guys are wondering about success rates july it's really you know where, where we're at in july the early part of july is really tough for blues and it is really tough for flatheads actually but later on sometimes you can get a situation where you can get onto a bite and like we said when we even started this whole thing went out yesterday one of the toughest days i've ever had you know the whole country's been weird like the bite's been really weird and tough and I still can't put my finger around it, but I'm gonna try. It may take me a few years, but I'm gonna try to see. Russia. What? The Russians did it. The Russians, the Russians did it, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so toughest day, yeah. And, and really for where we fished here, I've seen it just as bad, but usually that's when they drop the water like really fast like that severe dropping water puts all those fish into panic survival mode and they just don't have uh, a penchant for biting but we couldn't even get channel cats because that last anchor we were actually on channel cats we couldn't get them to take down fresh shad i mean that's rough but you know that's the reality of fishing i mean some days are going to be rough because if every day was great none of us would ever do it We'd only do it when we got hungry. Becca, we would need long arms for that. How's your guys night doing on my way home? Few channels and one flat. Parker, it was pretty rough. We caught a couple channels and a drum. That was pretty pathetic. But, you know, uh, sometimes you just got to roll the dice. We fished some pretty epic spots, and we did mark some big fish, but we sure couldn't get them to bite. Now, I will say one thing. Moon Eye was really hard to get, and the only decent bites we got were Moon Eye. And we only had two of them. Been wild. A lot of good fishermen not getting anything. You're right, Mr. Gadget. And, you know, seen a lot of dead blues all around 10 pounds. Weird, Higgins said weird it is weird so um full moon not helping i would agree with that parker pursuits solo texan adventures hello tim how's it going well uh we kind of got our butts kicked and we are driving home we were gonna stay if the two bike... and a half hour yeah. walk of shame yeah this is, this is a big walk of shame i'm telling you coffee energy drinks and, and shame. shame that's right <laughs> becca what talking about punch bug well I wish there was a way for chat to just keep going on here because it just disappears. Anything from Casey's? Ouch, Hagen. Anything from Casey's? I don't. We're good to go. Let's you? Go. Yeah, we're no, good to okay. go. I can reach in sandwiches back there because I might have to have one. Oh, one yeah. Hagen Grubbs doing a laugh. Yeah. I mean, we are definitely doing the big drive of shame right now. Uh, we There, there is a, a really cheap, really weird, horrible... Uh, hotel room not too far from here probably 11 miles up the road it's kind of out in the country and it, it's kind of goofy but it's like 38 bucks a night and they were full that was weird yeah uh, solo Texan we did enjoy ourselves because we got to see once again why we don't come down here until the first weekend of August <laughs> And I don't believe if they don't run them gates down there. Yeah. Like where yeah. he was talking about. 
Yeah. And yeah, if they don't run the gates and the and the blues can't come through or I won't know, come through. I don't know. I don't know. About coming, I don't know. I know. Coming back here, man. I know. Water level. I mean, come on. Yeah. So they, they have no reason to open them gates, dude. No, they don't. They don't. And they so haven't. yeah, and we we are definitely at the mercy of the gates at the dams below this. Right home is always twice as long after a tough day of fishing. It is, but Sean and I really enjoyed talking about the combination of things that either went right or went wrong or the possibilities of next time. We're professional drive of shame, guys. We, we are. We, sometimes we, can, we high five on the way yeah, home. Yeah. Sometimes we look at pictures of monsters. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, we were, uh, we, we, we went down to near St. Louis and we just absolutely destroyed the big blues for weeks and then i took a friend of mine that wasn't having too good too good a luck right in between there like right in between where we were filming and uh boom there was something going on. shoot we caught 50 blues from you know 10 pounds all the way up to 130 and then the next week it was terrible epic i hope august it has been the best month for me and you know mr gadget it's really one of the better months for me too except for the flathead pre-spawn and that was a little rough this year because we really didn't have much we're water by low water we were we have been plagued by low water all year last year we're plagued by high water yep last year was completely high in june and through july and it didn't shape up until august um it's 11 feet when we came here last year and yeah it's six less than six feet here yeah. yeah and you know that's right uh mr gadget it is one of those things where we have to i wonder if there's any tiny light in here light? yeah no, well i guess that's all right so until i start one, one of these uh, but it's it's just one of those things we've had so many great trips that it, it's even though it is kind of like the drive of shame it's really not that bad it's the game it is the game. If you want to play the game, this yeah. is what you're going to do. That's right. <laughs> and some, sometimes you're going to pay. Sometimes they're going to pay you. That's my whole thing with the catfish heroes thing. Yeah. The cat fisherman does more work than any fisherman. They bust their ass to travel, to, to collect bait, to have the right baits. Whether you're freezing baits, you're maintaining all your stuff. I mean, yep. it's just catfish hero life. <laughs> yeah. That's what you do. Anybody wants to get into big game catfishing, you know, and if you want to, you, you get that monster chase going, you're going to bust your ass. <laughs> but it's all fun. That's why we do it. Yep, that's right. That's right. It's our big game hunt, man. That's right. But when the thrill of victory, this this makes that, that, that victory much more sweet once you bust your ass and then you get that big beast. Yep. That's what it's all about. The the arm puller, the back strainer. Oh yeah. The 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 super fish. The fish that makes you shake when you're trying to pick it up. <laughs> yep. Yep. And you know, we took you guys to spots. We didn't take you to a single spot. I haven't caught fish well over sixty pounds. Yeah, the the one of them dikes I've caught I've caught fish there and I've been so physically exhausted bringing that fish in, I could barely hold it up. I had to shoulder hold one of them because it was, it was like 60 pounds and then that current over the dike. Oh yeah. Just just physically exhausting, but awesome. Parker Pursuits was in the kayak and Bob had a beaver dump him. Really? <laughs> yeah. There's some big ass beavers out there. Man. Was it in the dark too? Or what? Yeah, oh yeah. That scared that crap out of so me. So Hag Hagen pulled out one of the quintessential sayings. What did you say? Gotta have the bad days for the good <laughs> days to be good. That's right. That's right. We, know. we, we don't love the bad the, the bad days or the, the rough bites because you even start second guessing yourself. But I've been doing this long enough to know that I was doing things right. Maybe not for the exactly today, but for most of the time doing you know fishing this pool or even other pools i was doing the right thing because usually i contact monsters now when when i was a new fisherman i would second guess myself all the time say really was i really doing the right thing and a lot of times i wasn't so you know a lot of times i like to call like uh has life and uh, uh 
uh, Roger, when they when they went to the James, they were doing things that I've had a lot of success on the James doing. And I said, guys, you're doing the right thing. The fish just aren't biting because I've never seen it that bad. Where are we headed? We are headed to north of Peoria. Beaver is good in the dark, Mr. Candid says. <laughs> 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 Woo! Oh, geez, about spilled the phone. August and September, love them for big cats. I do too, Parker, especially on the Mississippi. It seems that a lot of the, a lot of the big fish spend a lot of time way south until August and September up in here. Now, um, you're quite a bit south of us, Parker, but still, it's just one of those one of those things where I'm I'm fairly. Uh, fairly knowledgeable about where they spend their time and how far they come up and how fast they move but the conditions have to be right for them to get up here in any sort of numbers and like you know sean just got done saying if they don't have any reason to run these dams the the big clams open uh, blues don't lock through we know they don't because the pool above the one we just fished has no fishable population of blues none they could lock through if they wanted to, but they don't. And all that water falls from the top because it's a hydroelectric dam. There is no way for them to pass through that normal, uh, those normal gates. So um, even the DNR will tell you, and they've done many, many net studies and shocking studies and all that stuff in the pool above Kiakuk, they don't find any blues up there. Well, Jerry down Parker, he got, they got level water down there because of the Illinois River. Yes, yes. In our Illinois River Valley, we got a lot of rain. Yeah, a lot of rain. But all of it went down the Illinois River to Grafton, yep. dumped into the Mississippi River, yep. and that's where he saw his rising that's river right. levels. We didn't We've get never any rise. had that up here. Nope. We, we never had our north rain. Everybody up in was telling me that the, 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 the Mississippi was flooded, <clears throat> and we didn't see it at all. It's been low the whole time. I mean, normally this summer, time, late summer pool yeah, low. It's, the, yeah, in, this is in like, June. August September pool low up by where we're from and there it, it, there's almost no current so when there's no current it's really rough on the flathead fishing because they start to lay out in the main channel and the main channel is fairly nondescript you get off the ledge on the main channel uh, it's it's more like a military operation it's not even fun you got to go you got to anchor on a ledge you got to throw 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 you got to grit it you got to do all this stuff just to put a few flatheads in the boat i got I don't even shad like it. scales stuck to my my calves than i've ever had in my life oh yeah those <laughs> shad were crazy so wabash nate the weird thing is everything is happening later this year the spawn and my pup is just now shedding her main coat yeah it is kind of it's it's been a little weird it's been well, really weird actually there's been a weather shift coming up you know like yeah. tornado alley let's say yeah. tornado alley that's moved north more i think now things are yeah. happening in the midwest differently yep yeah yeah and you know we've we had so much cold weather it kind of put us off the river for two weeks i mean it was cold it was getting down in the 50s at night and that was just a couple weeks ago for some reason, this center part of the country was experiencing rain. We experienced rain in our territory, our watershed, which all goes into the Illinois River system for two weeks. Still a fluctuation in the jet stream, normal jet yeah. stream. Yeah. And, you know, it could be due to an El Nino or La Nina. You know, you have that, like, what is it, every seven years? I'm not really... Or it could yeah. be the Russians. It could be, yeah, it could be the, it could be the Russians. We still got, we got 36 people in here, dude. 15 of them are sleeping. Cause you, you know, yeah, 15 are sleeping. Uh, about five of them are talking and uh, we're driving home. This is awesome. We usually call people and talk to people on right, the way home. We're right. actually talking to you guys yeah. right now. But usually we, we call people when we do really well. We say, John, we just hammered them on, you know, da 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 Oh, we've talked to we people. Yeah, we have, yeah, we have, we have, we have. Yeah. We're not fair weather callers. Right. Catfish round table. This is what we do all the time. This is a catfish round table with, with all these people. That's cool. Anybody else got any suggestions of what's going on in their world around the country? We just, this whole epic catfish thing, we've had 
low water up here in our, our area. Somebody just said, can catfish get COVID? Mr. Gadget could also be the China virus. Well, China. You never know about the China virus. Man. It could be aliens spreading some kind of shit to a guy or something, you know? You never know. I'm telling you what, I'm glad I'm not wearing these glasses and trying to drive home. Holy moly. Well, what was that? Dang catfish ain't had their shot. Guys, be careful. Just got home, jump in the shower, smell like shit. I'll guarantee there's going to be a shad scale on, like, my elbow or something. I will still have a shad scale Becca, on me Becca on says, do catfish ever close their eyes? I think they would if they had eyelids, Becca. They don't. They're stuck open. They do sleep, though. Some people think fish don't sleep, but they actually do. Just for very short periods of time. Very short periods of time. They go, I, I suppose it would be more right if I called it suspended animation rather than like sleep like we do. Because they've been observed doing it and, and they don't see, you know like how dogs, you know, they, they flinch like we do and they have dreams and all that stuff. They've never noticed that with catfish or other fish. Seems likely I've only gotten fish on chicken. John Reinhardt. That's the problem. A chicken, chicken. Uh, won't touch shad skipjack only. Got one smallish blue from a kayak tonight on chicken. Wow. Becca, that's what I was asking basically. Do they sleep? Yeah. Yep. But they can't close their eyes. I mean, and, and I wouldn't say that they have. Well, yeah, they do. They have a an, an arc. They have an Arcadian uh, cycle. So. Like this time of year, they're more active at night and more lethargic during the day. Um, funny, sleep and catfishmen have something in common. Little sleep, you're right. So, um, oh, I'm on sleep. You know, and then, and then at some point after the after the uh, after the spawn, because most catfish are more active during the day in the spawn, unless you're way south in the hotter portions, and then they just they just do that out of. Uh, Basically, because they're cold-blooded, uh, you know, cold-blooded creatures. When they get too hot, they're actually taxed. Like uh, if you've ever seen a bullfrog that gets too hot, they get all puffy and tired and everything else. They need just that right temperature. You know, when the water temperature is high, how it yes, it really hurts oh, yeah. the fish. It does. Bring a northern, find a northern pike in hot water and see what happens to it. I might go belly up on you. Oh, if you yep. fight him too hard. Oh, geez. Almost almost anything, will, you know, in the warmer water. It doesn't even have to be that warm for a big northern pike to get taxed. I mean, they'll fight you good, but look out. Yeah. They could die from a three minute fight. Yeah. Oh, somebody said something. Kind of like me feet get all puffy and tired. <laughs> yeah. But I used to be the official at the Labor Day frog jumping contest in my local town. And you could really tell the, the, the frogs that had either been handled or they were too uh, hot because they're all big and puffy and they jumped about a foot or didn't jump at all. And the ones that you kept just at the right temperature, you know, about 68 to 75, uh, you know, they did really well. They were lively, they weren't all super green and puffy, and you know, just like any reptile, too hot, and they just, reptile or Coming up on the thing. place where we usually stay. Yep, yep. This is where we live sometimes. The, the Bates Motel. Start practicing by croaking. Look at it, dude. It is pretty full. Oh, Look it is it. pretty full. Look at it. Man, I hope there's a place holding gas. Oh, oh, you didn't get gas? 
Mm -mm. Uh oh. I bet Casey's is already open. Isn't there a love somewhere? Oh, probably. Okay. Yeah, we're we're worried we might have to sleep in the truck again. <laughs> oh no, we're not doing that. <laughs> Let's not sleep in we the truck again. That kind of sucks. Miles still empty. Okay, so we're all right. Thirty-three wonderful people riding home with us. You just say the bait, baits. Yeah, not that bait. Well, you know it smells like bait when we're in there. Yeah, because because we we bring our we have to bring all of our rods into the hotel room and it just smells like hell. All of our stinking, oh, stiff stinky clothes. pants and oh my gosh, shirts all slung. We stayed from, in a fancy one one time. Oh and yeah, we, we did. Stunk the hell we out of that place. Yeah, we we stayed in like a five star almost. It was like a four star <laughs> hotel because that was all that was open. Was that down in Alton? Yeah. Yeah, and I mean they had the fanciest, biggest breakfast you ever saw. It was one hundred and twenty five dollars a night, and. That room was immaculate when we went in, and it was a disaster by the time we left. That was the time Garrett was with us. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Garrett caught the ugliest, the ugliest blue cat. It looked like... It looked like it got attacked by a propeller. It had, like, a big cut on his face. And it was, like, missing whiskers and fins and everything else. It was about 50 pounds. But it was... The craziest blue I'd ever seen. The Bates Motel, yeah. The people that run it, they're not quite right. You know, they, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it in a nice way. Two stands, what's up? Sir Stan of the James River. Sir Stan, we're on our drive of shame. Yeah. <laughs> the, the drive, the, the drive home of shame, and I, I'm gonna tell you what. Even as bad as the bite was on the James, you guys did better than we did. Stop to say hi. I'm at the beach. At the beach, only one up. What is the beach, Stan? Besides the beach. Place going open? live for flounder in the morning i don't know it looks like it's open um, oh yeah circle k you know in catfish travels in some of these rough towns we have seen some sights at gas stations at like three in the morning haven't we we've seen people sleeping on the steps We've seen we people we meet people gas because we stunk so bad when we went there. <laughs> man, y'all stink. <laughs> we, we, come up all, we got oh, white, man. we got slimed up clothes. Oh, and we yeah. do. We walk oh, into a gas station. People yep. are like, "What in the hell you been doing? What have you been doing?" <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't know how much is going to get done as far as work goes tomorrow, but I'm going to try it. Oh, man. So out of 35 people, say hello if you're actually awake and watching. It's always interesting. You know, yeah, out of like 100 people, there'll be 15 people talking. So Don Johnson's awake. John Reinhardt is awake. Solo Texan's awake. Mr. Gadget's still awake. That's awesome. We even got another person. I should, I should be able to change the thumbnail to drive of shame home in the truck. <laughs> and then people wouldn't come in and think we were like trying to catch fish still. Flatty Daddies is here. Flatty Daddies, we didn't do, we didn't catch a single flathead. We actually uh, changed our plan from Mission Flathead. There's, they're showing 
from Mission Flathead to Mission Flathead and Blues, about two and a half hours south. And it didn't work out so good. Water level low, current down, marked a bunch of fish located around uh, Asian carp. I keep repeating the same story, but uh, what do you all want to hear about? Hello, she even did it backwards. Oh, how'd you do, flatty daddies? Tell me you guys caught fish, because we certainly didn't. We caught a couple channel cats and a drum. A drum. A drum. On live bait, believe that or not. Be safe. Please don't text and drive. Warren Stock is awake. So what do you guys think? Should we do the Mississippi up north next time? Or should we go far south? I'm thinking far south. But that's going to be a little bit. That'll be after the first weekend. Of, we, we might do a... Now I've got the little drummer boy stuck in my head, she says. Um, <clears throat> so if... I don't think we're going to come back to this spot. Yeah, that's all right. We were talking, flatty daddies, that... Uh, if it was catching all the time, we wouldn't do it because this is what keeps a person excited, knowing that it's rough sometimes, even when you think it shouldn't be. And that combination, you start thinking it through your head. Okay, so what, what are the reasons, you know, and to some people it's just excuses, but there's a reasoning behind it. Why uh, the bite was so terrible. Um, I can't exactly tell you except for the likelihood Got someone on his first flatties. One was 30 pounds. That's great. Um, you know, the likelihood of our area being good for blues at this time of year is kind of, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say minuscule, but not all that likely. Um, I was just hoping that the water conditions and we hadn't had high water for a while because they do still a slow night and upriver wind. Oh, we had some horrible upriver wind, horrible. And we had a big thunderstorm. So, um, it's just, uh, it's just one of those things. I've seen worse thunderstorms. <laughs> they came back for the big finish. Looking forward to the next one. Thanks Warren. And this is, uh, I guess the big finish. At the gas station. So I felt sorry for everybody that was on the James last week. So I guess everybody that was on the James last week can feel sorry for us today. Wow. I'm looking pretty rough. Got the gym from Taxi here. I'll just leave it up. There we go. Yeah, Jeremy, we are headed home. We were going to stay another night, but if that, uh, if that bite was that bad, a lot of times, you know, it's just not worth staying the next day. Sometimes it is, but a lot of times it takes two, three, four days to clean up a bite that's that suppressed. You know, when you get 20 or 30 bites and you only get a few hookups, that's pretty rough. I even tried to feed them a few times. We put the clicker on and they'd, they'd pull it just a little bit. And, it, you know, by that time it was probably channel cats, but we didn't have a single blue cat pull down. Not that I could discern was a blue cat for sure. Yep. What'd you get? 
couple cookies. Couple want one? cookies. I might. Chop, I might chop. have a cookie. So Sean's got some cookies. Oh yeah. Cookie cookies. I got a daily sandwich. Cookies too. and some sandwiches. Yep. I think Hagen finally went to sleep. Becca says she wants a cookie. Mm, we got Circle K chocolate chunk. Those things will last through a nuclear war. Hell yeah. <laughs> ain't gonna last long nope. to me. Hagen didn't go to sleep. He's still awake. Got the thumbs up. Man, did you see what he did to his boat? That boat looks that's I awesome, know. dude. But man, you want to talk about getting into it. Oh, yeah. Down to switching trailers and turning yeah. the trailer yeah. to his new boat. Fuel tank, moving the console. That dude, yep. he, everything. That thing's dialed in. Pretty awesome, Hagen. <laughs> I bet he didn't think oh, how awesome man. he was doing it. <laughs> plug this in this thing dies pretty quick without being plugged in oatmeal no raisins Becca said we don't have those Becca we're fresh out they didn't have any in there they had uh, Reese's peanut butter one so I didn't really Ooh. feel like a Reese's peanut butter one I wonder if I can just set that thing on the dash. The dash cam. You can be able to read it. Oh, you're right, I will. Can't read it when it's on the dash. Cookie monster. So, Hagen, when do you think this bite's going to straighten out? All over the country. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. It seemed kind of rough to me, but I'm glad you guys liked it. Old cereal commercial. Cookie crisp, yeah. Chocolate chip is the best, Warren Stock says. Tearing up one of them sandwiches I made it ain't too bad. Yeah, not bad. Still pretty good. Yep. You know, I speaking of a rough trip, I never feel like on a one day trip, especially if you get there kind of late, because we didn't leave until probably one o'clock in the afternoon. I you know, even though we looked at a lot of things, I'm still going through in my head what we didn't look at. Because one thing I know, even on a tough bite, if you look at tournament results or, you know, you, you talk to, you know, a lot of people, somebody is usually on fish somehow. And, uh, you know, I, I like to make myself feel better and say, oh, the bite was so rough. But we all know that somebody, oh, yeah, lost service for a while. Oh, okay, so what I was saying was, I'm always thinking about what I could have done better. And on a one day trip that you didn't leave until one o'clock in the afternoon, even though you were able to look at a lot of stuff, it's still one of those things where you're constantly second guessing. And there's all like, yeah, exactly like Jeremy said, there's always, always somebody that's on fish. Hopefully soon, I think I might head down to Tennessee River. <laughs> Uh, this week and see if it's any better. Well, you know it's better because they've got a humongous catfish, a big catfish population in the Tennessee River system. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean the bite's always on uh, because, you know, we all know oh, there's... They've got a there's, bunch of hoop nets and commercial fishermen down there? Yeah, they don't have hoop nets and commercial fishing down there either. I mean, we saw probably 20 sets of hoop nets right in the area that I fish. And I probably should have pulled one up just to see if there's any blues in this pool. <laughs> I 
Eric said, how any, you mean how many? About 20 right in the area that we fish. A bad day there is a good day on the Ohio River. I believe that. I've fished the Ohio a few times, Hagen, and it's, uh, it's a very subtle river. It's, it's one of those that, uh, you know, you, you try to get onto what I would consider an epic spot like I fish, and they're few and far between. And not only are they few and far between, it doesn't necessarily, uh, yeah, and it could be, Jeremy, that there is a lot of pressure on this pool at the moment. Now, um, I do low know population, that... Low population, high pressure. Yep, high pressure and low population. That that's that's that that can be pretty rough. I mean, so probably next time, definitely if we go after blues, we're going to go to the St. Louis area or below. Even though that has pressure, it's just not as a it's it's not a very finite pool because there's no dams below that really. Um, so let's just say, um, what was I gonna say? What was I just talking about? Kind of what we're gonna try next, maybe. Yeah, what we're gonna try next. Uh, you're talking about the Ohio River. You're talking. Yeah, about I was talking about the Ohio River and Hagen. Uh, the one time we did fish the Ohio, the Mississippi was really high. The Wabash was overpressured, and we we went from basically the farthest north point to the St. Louis area, and it was like super flooded, like max flooded. So we headed over to the Wabash on the same trip, and the Wabash, I hadn't fished it before, but we were down around Terre Haute, and I wasn't really impressed with not only the the the, the matrix of the river, but I was also not impressed with how much pressure there was. There was bank poles, or you know, some people call them ditty poles. They were everywhere. I mean, everywhere. We ended up managing a 30 pound flathead fishing some of the great cover, uh, you know, in a, in a 20 mile stretch. And that was okay. So we headed over to the Ohio River, and I can't even remember exactly which pool we were on. Maybe it was the Markham pool. I don't know. But, uh, you know, we, we, we basically focused on some downriver stuff and uh, that wasn't really conducive. Um, so we headed up to the, the dam because we wanted to get some moon eye. We ended up catching moon eye and skipjack and we basically decided that if we were gonna get on a fish in short order, we were basically going to drift the sand humps. And this is old style drifting where you just basically drift with the current and basically drag your, uh, you know, your three ounce sinkers and stuff like that and we ended up catching a multitude of fish but nothing really over 30 pounds mike turner's in the house what up tim uh we're uh, uh sorry what, what up mike um he said what's up tim uh actually sean and i are headed two and a half hours uh north home with our tail between our legs because we got our asses handed to us the fish really weren't biting uh, we set up on some areas uh, that should have uh, really done, but it, we were taking a chance going this early. We did a tournament on Moultrie in February, and out of 30 teams, 14 teams weighed in a fish in, and second place had 70 pounds total, three fish, and every other team that weighed in but one team was under 40 pounds. Yep, that's usually kind of how that, uh, that bell curve goes team we got first had 173 pounds total and you know that's Santa T Cooper and I've actually had anchors where I've caught 400 pounds of fish before matter of fact I've had anchors where I've caught more than 400 pound fish and I just we just fished that with you only three fish and they caught a lot of fish they said and that team caught 103 pounder a 50 and a 20. What the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, somebody's always on fish, Jeremy. You know, if you get enough people, somebody, you know, they land in the right spot where you got a few active fish or or they they have the right bait. Well, the fish worm bite. I can say it, it might make me feel better, but it's not necessarily the whole truth. Not that we know of. Those blues are so nomadic and travel so much. And when this river's been so low, low up in this level. Yeah. 
You do not open those dams like they normally do. Right. This, this migration has been halted up here. I bet. Yep. Yep. And you know that's something that we knew we were gonna risk. It was since last season, really. I mean, besides the power plant lake, and I don't know about you guys, but I'm not really excited about power plant lakes. Oh, that was a deer, wasn't it? It was? Yeah. Shoot. Pretty good cookie, really. Yeah? Becca says, do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? That's right, Becca. Truth before all else except honor. Oh, jeez. Yeah, my T. Sean's right here. What's up, buddy? Night, Mr. Gadget. Kind of in BFE right now. Fucking deer standing right next to the road. Another one? Jeez. We got deer everywhere. Last time we were in a long trip like this, I looked out the rear uh, side mirror and the, the, the hub was on fire. I like BFEs, so do I, Becca. Surprise the flatties. Hey, here are still favoring cup bait over live bait. Just, yep. No, we're not seeing that at all, flatty daddies. We haven't hardly, I mean, we've thrown cut bait and cut, but we haven't caught but two flatheads on cut bait all year. And that, it's, it's actually kind of weird. It, it seems that also the moon eye migration hasn't really done really well either. Because normally up in our pool, up near where we live, there's plenty of moon eye. And we're having trouble finding them. Sean Abney. We did actually pretty darn terrible. We took a risk and uh, went south for blues, but we didn't go far south enough. We're at the farthest uh, north point uh, where you can expect to catch a blue. And they just, very low population, heavy pressure, lots of commercial fishing. There was 20 hoop nets just in a probably a two mile range uh, where I usually fish. And that is not looking good for the home team. man in the moon or a pirate with an eye patch he would be a moon eye wow <laughs> same here in the Ohio downtown Right, fellas and ladies I'm getting tired of holding this phone up and Sean and I are gonna talk about our failure and then how we're gonna redeem ourselves in a week or so so I would like to say thanks for thanks guys. joining us on our uh, 
rough epic uh, trip to epic waters without anything to show for it besides swamp ass <laughs> pretty much we will we we got a ways to drive but we will definitely uh try not to hit any deer or have any uh trailer start on fire or anything my turner i want to get out tomorrow but water being low at 100 degree heat messes with the bad here yep here too all right hagan we'll see you next time thanks for coming in yeah man have a good night buddy Oh, we probably got, what do we got, another two hours? Yeah. Yeah, we probably got about another two hours. Thanks, everybody. Good night, flatty daddies.